Okay, so I want to talk about these letters from Smith to Mr. Girl because we're going to go over it today. I want to talk about feelings and emotions and, you know, what is it all? What is it all for? What does it all mean? How do we how do we do this in a way that's reasonable and logical and thoughtful and loving? So check it out. Here are Smith's letters. I just want to give you guys context for when he comes on later. So this is Max. This is how I see you from Smith. And Max gave permission for him to post all these. They have an understanding and they have like a mentorship going on. So they're, you know, they have a consensual relationship if that matters to anybody. He said, Dear Max, you're holding yourself to impossible standards. You wish your fans would hold you to impossible standards. In the absence of destiny or your father, you have become your own captor. At times you've tried to turn your audience into your captor. I need you to realize that's that it's you. You've mentioned many times that the challenge of learning a new skill feels much more rewarding than yielding your mastery of them. You seem to think this is a benign observation, but it's not. It's a self-protective, self-defeating attitude. Learning a new artistic skill means that you have another tool in your belt, but a tool to what end? What job? The, uh, the project underneath it all is you. The thing you repeatedly give up on is yourself. Not your fans, not destiny, not your dad, not Sheila and you. You rationalize yourself away from yourself. You create a facade that looks nearly identical to you, but you're still trapped inside. It absorbs your pain and becomes stronger. The reason you have blind spots is because you want to be granted freedom by a divine force. You want to believe that your next great arc will earn you some form of salvation to finally be loved and accepted. However, the more loved and accepted you are, the more things feel wrong. I'm excited for your upcoming music video. Please be kind to yourself, Smith. He said, P.S., I don't know if I'm writing this for you or for me. I know. All right. I have my own blind spots, he said. So I think this feels to me like um, experiment around feelings, but also I feel like it's a little bit of an art piece. So I'm kind of viewing this arc of Smith to be about his journey as a consciousness, obviously. And I'm less, it's less about Mr. Girl. I think people are going to hyper focus that it's targeted towards Max, but it really has nothing to do with Max, right? It really has to do with with Smith. Um, someone replied and said, forget why you're writing it. I'm more interested in why you posted it here instead of sending it to Max's inbox. We don't need to read your love letters, dude. Sharing this is the exact wrong road Max went down. See, like I didn't think it was that deep. Like people really freak out, but I don't think it's that deep. I'm like, yeah, it's like an art piece. It's like an expression. It's content. They're content creators. I, I think people are thinking it's like more personal than it is, or maybe it is. We'll talk to Smith about it, right? You keep your sanity in this online space by having degrees of separation. Yeah, but this online space also is so rude when it comes to boundaries. It's such a little cesspool of a space. It doesn't often allow those separations. And also, when do you get to talk about feelings and have it be reasonable and rational? In this space, are you lost, allowed to talk about your feelings without it becoming inappropriate? Because I've been in so many spaces on the internet where like there's a line where it's inappropriate, but mostly it's okay to talk about your feelings. So why do you think this space in particular has a hard time allowing people to talk about it, right? Um, you think, the commenter goes on to say, you all think that by being raw and open and honest that you're somehow making something new, but it's just parasocial shit uh, you both decry. Again, I didn't think the letter was that intimate yet. So I we haven't even gone to the other ones, but that one seemed really like basic to me, like poetry you'd write to an online. I don't know. It seemed weird, but not like a big deal. It gives your fans a, the false sense that they're close uh, to the real you and not the facade you create and promote. And at the same time, further digs nails into your own head that ties you tighter and tighter to the internet. A cold, cruel, heartless place full of people who are empowered by an emanity to tear you down and laugh about it. See, this person is way too attached to the internet bubble. This person doesn't have the separation they, they say that Smith should have. The internet isn't a cold, cruel, heartless place. Only this part of it is. This part, this space on the internet is incredibly horrible compared to other spaces on the internet I've been. There's always drama, but this by far has been the most toxic space. And a big part of that is because they pride themselves on being sort of logic bros. But they're the furthest from it. And that's why it's so damaging because it's like a politician who says they have their your best interest in mind. It's like, sure, bro. Yeah, okay. You and Max could both learn a few lessons about why this kind of stuff is bad for all involved. See, this is the, this is the part of the internet that will tear you apart for your life, your choices, who you are, what you look like, and then be like, don't make it personal, bro. And then the moment you do the same thing, they're like, whoa, why are you making it personal, bro? 
it's like the most gaslighty space I've ever been on on the internet. But to be fair to them, they are self-reporting, right? So it's okay. To be fair, they are self-reporting, right? Somebody replied and said they both have the same issues. If it wasn't so depressing and Mr. Girl wasn't an actual abuser, harasser, and stalker, then it'd be entertaining to watch the lol cows can uh, convince themselves they're important internet people. But that's everybody in this space, right? I was just on a panel and what did I say? I was like, we're nobody on the internet. Why are we acting like we're important? And Lav or somebody was like, why do you keep saying that? It's because everybody here thinks that. It's not just Max. It's not just Smith. It's not just anybody. Everyone who's on the internet has enough narcissism within their ego, which is normal, everybody has it, to put themselves on the internet and think, I should be listened to. Even I feel it, because I'm a content creator, I'm willing to say, hey, I think I'm interesting enough that you should spend five days a week watching my live streams. To be fair, I do think I'm interesting enough, and I really enjoy watching people on their live streams. I really enjoy content creation. I really enjoy the people I watch. I like their work. I don't mind being a fan. I think people just tie their whole life into it and that's the problem so these people in these comments are so dramatic and then they're looking at the content creators and be like why why are you there bro they're the ones commenting on reddit like can you like do they not even understand their the oh they're like look in the mirror you're commenting on a reddit post i don't comment on reddit what do i need to be on reddit for i don't even have a reddit like why would i need to be on reddit you know what i mean like I have the only time I'm on Reddit is to check stories if people link them or send them to me. I have one of those like I think anonymous accounts. I don't know what they're called. I'm such a boomer. I started a Reddit page so I could like log into 18 plus like posts so I could see all the stories people were sending me. So I have like one of those random usernames that I don't even use. So uh, but I, like, I'm not a Redditor. Right? Remember how I dated a Redditor and I just didn't understand it. I was a Tumblr girl. So classic queer move right there. You know. So again. People who are like being mad at Smith for writing about this, they're the ones also on a Reddit page arguing with Smith, thus becoming a part of the content like they're showing up here. So isn't that funny? So that's the first letter here. I'll link it in chat so you guys can check it out. That's like the first letter, okay? People had like a breakdown over it because people are emotional on the internet. While screaming, you're being too emotional. Um, okay. Um, and he says that's, there's Reddit sub about drinking water, people posting water bottles. It's called, uh, hydro homies, the least threatening part of the internet. Yet the same site. Love that. I love that. Discord says the two genders, Reddit and Tumblr. True. Discord also says now nah, Smith looks up to mask Max. I think that's why I never was a Smith fan. Yeah. I mean, for sure has a connection to Max, which I'm not faulting him for. Everyone goes on a journey, right? Um, Discord said Smith is being mentored by Max or the other way around. Smith is being mentored by Max. They have a mentee mentor relationship. Um, and Smith is being mentored by Max and they're okay with the postings that are going on. Yeah. So I think that's fine. Like I've had mentors in the past. I don't know why you'd be mentored by Max, but obviously there's a part of Smith that identifies enough with Max to allow that mentorship to happen. That's fair. That's, that's Smith's journey. I don't like Max. You know, I've banned him from my my bubble like I don't want to talk to him or be around him because he I'm sorry he's so bad faith he twists people he's willing to say things about people that are so obviously not true so obviously like I'm not interested in engaging with him so then there's a second letter okay this is the second letter um this is dear Max Smith um 12 days ago once again I'm writing an incredibly embarrassing letter to you on an incredibly on your incredibly embarrassing subreddit. Grab your popcorn, horses and horse fuckers. <laughs> I've been learning not to swallow my emotions out of shame. I think this is really key here. This is what I want to talk to Smith about, right? I've been learning not to swallow my emotions because of shame. So shame comes from the bubble, right? So guilt is when you've betrayed your own values and shame is when you've betrayed the expectation of the bubble, your culture, where you're raised, you know, the rules of society, whatever society you're in. I know people on the internet love to say like society and assume we all know which society they're talking about, right? Lakara says, why would he write a public letter? Why not? What is in this letter that doesn't make good content? So again, from my perspective, nothing about these letters is weird being on the internet because I'm a content brained content creator. I'm a content creator. I don't know how this wouldn't be on the internet. And it's not that intimate or personal. It's really not. Like, as a person who's involved with her feelings and isn't ashamed of them, this is a normal letter to write to somebody. And it's not weird putting it on the internet. 
But I think it's interesting that people think it's too intimate to be on the internet because I'm like, this isn't real intimacy. Like it's partially real intimacy, just like it is when, you know, people call me on my stream and we're giggling together. Like it's real. But if it was private enough to not be on the internet, it would have been private. It obviously isn't private enough to be private. That's why it's on the Reddit, right? Just because it's about feelings and it's public doesn't mean it was meant for privacy. Not all of your feelings need to be private, right? So let's talk about that as well. Evicting my self-imposed mental blocks have been making me a lot smarter. I was thinking about our relationship. I have a lot of shame and embarrassment about it. Fair. Some people are ashamed to be your fan because they can't admit to their friends and family. I have no shame. My shame is worse. I'm ashamed of my love for you because I believe that it can only hurt me, which is probably true. I've tried to suffocate it. And by the way, when he says you're my love for you, I'm assuming he means in the biblical way. Like he means it in the sense of like the 12 disciples or he means it in the sense of like, I love my fellow man, right? I've tried to suffocate it as, as if you're a woman demanding to be protected from my feelings. It's very hard for me to access my negative feelings about you if I'm struggling to pretend I don't have positive ones. It gives you a weird advantage in our conversations. I think this part is interesting to me. I'm too hyper dependent. Like I'm so independent, not dependent. Hi, I'm independent to such a degree that I don't understand the idea of it giving anyone an advantage. Like Smith is 30. You're an adult, bro. Grow the fuck up. And at the same time, like Max taking advantage of you is only if like he lies to you on purpose and you believe it and you become a victim of that lie. But otherwise, like shit happens. So the fact that it, like you're 30 and I can't wait to talk to Smith about this and it could give anyone an advantage that just means like Smith as a consciousness is acknowledging that, which I think is important to acknowledge because he shouldn't feel shame that he's 30, but he should be asking himself, why at 30 am I still struggling not to allow people advantages over me in conversations? And I don't get me wrong. Even I have moments like this where I'm like, oh my gosh, like what is happening like right now, like in an internet conversation and my brain is like so overstimulated. I'm like, what's happening? But I know what it is. It's not because of an emotional connection. I'm literally like, flabbergasted I'm literally like what the fuck is happening right Smith is saying it gives you a weird advantage in our conversations that's interesting why is that happening you've expressed shame about being loved and a part of it uh, a part of it is me protecting you but more than that I believe that you will never love me probably not I doubt Max and Smith are meant to be like inner circle or something so I punish myself for it as if it's a parasite to be burned off my flesh. People have mocked me as if I'm pining for your approval. The peanut gallery makes things much more confusing. It's like looking down a corridor in a fun house trying to find the one true mirror. I found it. I'm not pining for your approval. I'm vomiting my shame onto your carpet. You deal with it. Very artsy to me. This is very artsy fartsy, right? So I have no problem with it. I'm already feeling more negatively about you after typing this out. Little tingles. I had more to say, but I want to let this sit. It actually took a lot out of me. I don't want to cheapen it. Love, Smith. P.S. I'm getting messages about people wanting to jump ship into to my subreddit. LOL. I hate Reddit. I rarely use it. Okay. That's fine. There's like, it's weird, but it's also like too artsy for me to think it's weird. Smith went to art school, right? Like, I'm literally not worried about it. Mr. Girl has been like, um an artsy fartsy person since day one all these people are like see a therapist see a therapist well he is so again when I read this I'm like okay you're like an edgy art kid who's doing an edgy art project but it's about your real feelings because art often is a lot of artists are having these edgy conversations with themselves that are also like sound a little silly but all feelings sound silly when you write them down that's why people avoid them I really think people avoid talking about their feelings because it makes you sound silly right it is a very silly thing. Have you ever read your text messages between you and an ex? Cringe. Have you ever read your own sex messages to your partners? Cringe. If anyone else read them, tell me they wouldn't be cringy. But you're in the moment. They mean something to you. I think this is how I look at this is what's happening here. You know what I mean? I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, yeah. He's having like an experience. He's turning into like a little art piece. He's cringy to us, but to him, it's like really profound. And I bet that's why people avoid their feelings because it makes you look cringe. That's why people pretend they're psychopaths or they actually romanticize, um, you know, sociopathy or they romanticize Dr. House. They romanticize being the person who's not in his feelings because you don't want to be seen as somebody who's cringe. But like, bro, you're cringe no matter what. You're cringe if you don't share your feelings. You're cringe if you do. I hate to say it, but all of humanity is just cringe. 
All these great men pretending they're great. Cringe. Have you seen Fresh and Fit throw a tantrum? Cringe. Like everyone is cringe. I'm cringe. You're cringe. We're all cringe. I just don't think any of us can escape how stupid we look. And I think everyone looks stupid. And I think that's what's funny. It's like we take ourselves so seriously. We're not willing to look stupid. And I think that's why I do like Smith. Because, like, he's really willing to look stupid. And a part of me is, like, really likes that about him. Because I know for a fact all these debate bros would never. They would never. Because they're not. They're not willing to look stupid. So they pretend they're not. But they're still stupid. You know what I mean? So, again, like, I think this is what's so interesting about feelings. And the same group of men that are in the dating market who are like, women won't date us. And they're the reason we're single and we're grumpy about it. Because... Yeah, because you're not willing to look stupid. You're not willing to be romantic. You're not willing to fall in love. You're not willing to be vulnerable. You're not willing to do a lot, right? Like cringe is just a part of existing, right? Being lame, being silly, being whatever. Adrian says, but why is this public? I don't want to spill my guts in public ever, but true, we're all pathetic and cringe. I think it's more, it's content. It's more of an art project. It's more of a, he's trying to get the audience to be more in their emotions. From my understanding of what Smith is doing, he is trying to get the audience to feel more of their emotions by witnessing someone's real story. So Smith is, is sharing something he's really going through, I think in hopes to get the audience to consider what they're going through. Right? Kay says cringe is the only constant. Amen. So I, I do think he's doing it on purpose. He's trying to be vulnerable with the internet to give them an opportunity to also be vulnerable, right? I've tried to do stuff like this in the past too, and then I realized like people didn't deserve it, but Smith is on his journey where he thinks people deserve it. Like remember when Smith talked to me and we were talking about like helping certain people? It's true we both agree that certain people just don't have the tools to move forward in their lives, but I pick up, I play a very strong game now of who gets my attention because if you give the wrong people attention, like the people that could have actually benefited from you, they've missed out. You know, if you give your attention to the wrong people, it not only hurts them, but it hurts you. But if you give the right people your attention, both people benefit, right? And so again, like Smith's on his own journey. This is his journey. Akara says, is he also a content creator? Because otherwise you're giving him way too much credit. Yeah, what do you mean? Do you guys not subscribe to Smith? I've literally collabed with him multiple times. He is a literal content creator. The next letter was responding to insane criticism, Smith. So he's writing to Mr. Girl's subreddit. Okay, he actually did a live show about this as well. And it says, I recently wrote a public letter to Max. Maybe you've read it. I'm considering doing a stream about it. The post is in preparation for that. So he said, if you, one, define my relationship with Max as one-sided infatuation, define the act of writing this public letter to Max as an issue that is causing me distress, or define Max as my victim. So a lot of people claim like this is one-sided. Max doesn't even want this. They absolutely have talked about this. Max has given consent to sharing this. Um, I'll read it for you. It's long, but I'll read it for you. Okay. If you're one of these three things, then a therapist would never tell me to do this. As a therapist, certainly wouldn't recommend that anyone post anything, some wouldn't post something like this publicly. My point was obviously this type of thinking that a therapist encourages and the type of conversation a therapist encourages you to have. It's hard to disagree with that point, which is why it was not engaged with. Many of you are either projecting your own issues onto this or trying to elicit an emotional response from me, like vulnerability seeking missiles. So basically people were saying a therapist would never tell you to do this. I don't know what relationship you all had with your therapists, right? But like, that's the thing about being content creators. You have to decide what part of your life is gonna be content, right? And RPG says, seems like he feels entitled to his love being returned. Sucks that it's not how that works. I don't get that at all. That's where I'm very confused. In nowhere in these letters is Smith saying or demanding anything of Max. He's not demanding anything of Max. But a bunch of people were saying Smith sounds like he wants something from Max. The only thing he wants from Max is to have a realization, which is asking too much. Right? He, Smith needs to let go of the attachment of expecting anything from anyone outside of negotiated like um, possibilities. And even then, like you, you have to do it within reason. But I don't think Smith is asking for the love to be reciprocated. I'm not getting that vibe at all. The most problematic aspect of this letter is uh, all the abusive comments and how they, how they might affect me. I knew that going in... And it's why I was inspired to write the letter in the first place as a prerogative and meaningful work that I can be proud of and I stand by it. Duh. He's admitting it right here. 
Okay, we're all on the same page. Now we can view this as an art piece or a declaration of introspection or a declaration of philosophy or a declaration of, a, it has a purpose. There would be no point in posting something like this in a place where everyone would already understand. Right, if he posted this somewhere else, I don't think it would matter. If I read this, I'd be like, okay, sounds like you guys are doing something together. Cool. But like, because it's the internet where everyone doesn't engage in their feelings, they're freaking out about it. You know what I mean? For me, I just don't see any weirdness about these letters because they're just talking about their feelings. Who cares? You know what I mean? My letter to Max was an extension of an ongoing public conversation between us. Max says I hate him beneath it all. I'm not sure if that's true, but I've realized it's impossible to know that if I'm too cowardly to express how I feel about him at all. This has come up in some form almost every time we speak on stream. So remember that Max is a very provocative. Max also comes off as somebody who can be reasoned with, but I think that's pretty untrue. I experienced some form of a cognitive dissonance that slowly undermines my ability to communicate. Maybe you can recognize this in your own life. The first step towards growth is to be honest. Okay. He goes on to say, ironically, although I could have spoken to Max in DM, sending this to him in private would be less respectful of his boundaries, which you could argue is somewhat problematic. So Max does have very strange boundaries, but okay. It's worth noticing that I don't think most of his most of the critics actually care about his boundaries. They don't. They're just fucking complaining because they don't have relationships with their parents. Nor do I think they actually care about me. Rather, they care about shutting me down. Absolutely true. Regardless, I would say that Max's boundaries are made particularly confusing for me because of his men messy boundaries with Lav. So Lav and Smith got different treatment from Max. To be fair, they're different people. She undermines his boundaries and is able to both have private, close relationships with him and a public relationship with him as a content creator. That's because it, once you take a mentor, mentee status with somebody, you're not peers. And that's why I always see it as a red flag when people mentor, mentee their like relationships. Because I'm like, that means you're not the same. That means you're not the same. Like you don't, you only mentor a peer if it's in something separate from, like a very specific thing. Like you could mentor each other in video games and it'd be like you're a peer. But the way that Max and Smith are doing a mentorship, I think it's not like that. You know what I mean? I think it's something else. So unlike Lav and Mr. Girl, it was a different relationship. And this is why every relationship is contextual. Every relationship needs its own negotiation. Not all friends can be treated the same. Not all people can be treated the same. I'm going to ask Smith, like, what is he mentoring you in? Because I'm not really sure. You know what I mean? Didn't Lav and Max break up um, in their friendship? Yeah, I think they did end their friendship publicly. Um so again, this is like if you guys aren't in on the like story about all of this, this is going to be probably more confusing for you. But you're just this is as much backstory as I'm willing to give before the interview today. I'm not sure Max knows what he's doing at this point and the protective boundaries he has with me doesn't exist to, for her. He's now undermining his own boundaries with her by collaborating on a rap song. Oh, that's weird. It's a comp it's a complicated mess. I mean, these people are just messy. In retrospect, interacting with Lav and Miss This Boundary Confusion is a major contributor to the stress I was expressing in my letter. They recently did a collab. My relationship with Max is not one-sided, nor is it infatuation. I said I love him, not that I'm in love with him. Obviously, like, love is a very unique word. It's complex. We have a panel coming up on the 20th with the girls on unconditional love. Definitely show up. It's going to be good. I also described, Smith goes on, it as having positive feelings towards him. Infatuation is not a positive feeling at all. Agree. Agree. Obsession, infatuation, crushing. Um, all of it is like has a very negative connotation if you take it too far. In situations like these, he says, it's hard to tell the difference between bad faith and projection, but I think they often go hand in hand. Max and I have a pre-existing relationship that has been going on for a year. I'm sure you're familiar. <clears throat> Because it's often memed that I'm his son. I'm not. The relationship I have with Max is essentially the inversion of his relationship with Lav. He does not want either type of relationship to blend into the other type because it could be harmful. While I understand, I don't necessarily agree with every decision he makes in defining the relationship. Overall, I respect it because he cares about me. I'm discovering now that this also upsets me for reasons that I have to unpack. I have yet to unpack. Both me and Lav want to blur these lines and Max hold his boundaries as best he can. Unlike Lav, this is something I appreciate about him, but it does not mean that he is in control of the relationship. As Max, Max points out in his response, and I find that distressing. Now, in relationships, there's always going to be boundary crossing, which is why you have to constantly update and negotiate. Like, oh, I don't think I like that anymore. Or, hey, like, I think we should talk about this. Or, oh, actually, I think I need to change this about our negotiations. 
I think sometimes in life there's like this mythos that exists, this like mythical dream that everything is going to be perfect and everything's going to make sense and everyone's going to understand each other perfectly and there's never going to be miscommunication and that's just not true. I would assume there's always going to be moments throughout life where there might be a miscommunication, which is why you need to prepare to have those very hard discussions. <coughs> and people, because the road to hell, hell is paved in such good intentions, people often cross those boundaries with the best intent ever. Let me help you even if you say you don't need it. Let me do it anyways. And it's like, okay, let's talk about why that's not helpful in this particular moment. I don't want to demonize anyone in this process. I want to figure out what human realness are we expressing. Maiden says, Smith seems more pure in his emotionality than Max. It seems like Max uses his emotional intelligence to control others, whereas Smith is on an emotional journey of self-discovery. So Smith comes across to me as much more genuine and safe than Mr. Girl. I agree with that, yeah. Um, PG says, does Max care about Smith? I think, I think Max cares about people the best way Max can, which is probably less than ideal. I think most people care about people the way they can. And again, instead of assuming they're gonna, they're, it's going to be symbiotic, you have to either accept it for what it is, which sounds like Smith is doing, but settling, or you have to move on to something else. Personally, I think Smith is settling in his dynamic with Max. I think um, Max is not the person that Smith can grow the best through, but this might be the best person for him at this moment in his life, personally. That's what I'm thinking. And again, it's um, it's hard to find a good mentor. They're really difficult to find in life. So to be fair, um, <clears throat> um, I'm inevitably going to push his boundaries and he will be holding them. This is how our relationship is structured and Max endorses it. He describes it as me being put in a childlike position. He doesn't want me to be, pre uh, he doesn't want me to preempt his boundaries and consistently predict what he wants me to be doing. He wants me to trust him to set his own boundaries. Because of that fact, he is not controlling me, only the relationship itself. I can act however I feel is, is appropriate, and he will say no if he needs to. By asking me to hold his boundaries for him, you're asking me to let, you're asking me to let him control me. Neither of us want that. I think that's really fair. So boundaries are for yourself in my bubble, because I know other people have different ideas of them, and that's fine. But the way I learned about them is boundaries are for you. Ultimatums are for other people. I have a boundary. You can keep doing you, but I'm going to have to remove myself versus I need you to stop this action so I can hang around. Those are two different desires. Those are coming from two different perspectives. So I think it's fair for Max to hold his own boundaries and for Smith to push them if that's okay. Like I have a relationship, right, where I love some of my friendships, some of my sibling friendships, some of my relationships. I love pushing boundaries and I want them to push my boundaries. But those are usually talked about and usually they would respect those boundaries. Not perfectly, by the way. My own siblings have broken my consent plenty of times and then we've had to renegotiate boundaries because people aren't perfect right some of my best friends have absolutely pushed boundaries it's a part of learning and then you have to decide is our friendship going to survive this boundary breaking because like consent is a thing that society is constantly restructuring it's cultural boundaries are cultural and specific to the individual so the idea that it's going to be perfect i think is such a child mentality of the internet like this whole discourse that the internet has in certain bubbles about everything being perfect all the way through is just like, I don't, I'm not going to engage with it. It's just so childlike. You can go to high school and post it on your Tumblr, but this isn't real life. Real life is messy and complicated, but with the right set of tools can be much easier to navigate. But people are not willing to engage with those tools. I think Max himself is somewhat unable to engage with those tools. But, you know, I don't engage with Max, so what do I know? Okay, consider your own relationship, Smith says. It's likely that you are being put into abusive situations when someone is forcing you to preemptively hold their boundaries for them. True. Actually, that's what's pissed me off about the internet in general, where they're like, you can't break people's boundaries. If first, they don't even explain them to you. But two, it's their job to hold them. It's their job to exit your life. But also... It is your job to explain them. You can't expect people to operate the same with every person they meet. And when people make decisions about you, it's usually uh, about you as a consciousness, right? What bubble are you in? If I'm at a bar with friends and someone's like, I don't want another shot. Of course, if I'm with a bunch of friends, they might be like, shot, 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 shot. Like take another shot. That's not breaking your boundaries, bro. Until you set down a hard one, it's just 
people having, quote, fun. But for some other people, that's not fun. So you need to make it clear to people that's not how you have fun. Hold your boundary and make it clear and then stick to the boundary. Or give an ultimatum. If you guys force me into taking shots, I'm going to leave and you can't be mad about it, right? So again, I don't think people understand like it's not unethical for people to like peer pressure you into shots at a bar. If you want to call it peer pressure, I feel like that's the wrong word. But encouragement to do something you might be a little too shy to do. I don't know. There's something here. But again, you have to enforce the boundary and then they have to accept the ultimatum. But those are two different things, right? So again, this idea that like it's going to be perfect. And again, is Max the perfect person to learn this with? Well, since Smith has an attachment to him, it is about this attachment. So he has to go through the journey of his emotions, which is what today's topic is about, right? <clears throat> Livy says, oh, wait, is Mr. Girl the man who defended the Cuties movie? I saw that movie. It's a really good movie. It's, it's really well made. I wouldn't let my daughters be in that movie because, like, I wouldn't even let my daughters be dancers. I wouldn't let my sons be performers because of child abuse. But it's a good movie. It's, like, cry-worthy. It's pretty good. Um, you know, female director and all that jazz. But it's, you know, I do think that Mr. Girl... I think Mr. Girl takes, like, an edgy approach to something that doesn't need to be edgy. And he, like, ruins everything. He tries so hard to say something profound, but he just looks crazy because he's not saying anything profound. You know what I mean? It's neither profound to say Cuties is a horrible movie or to say it's a good movie. Like, nothing about that is profound. It's just a movie, dudes. Like it or don't like it. It's not even profound. And if you're mad about, like, that movie, then you need to take your kids out of, like, anything that puts their body on display, period. You know, yeah, he defended it in the most inflammatory way. Exactly. Because he's he's such a little, like, f attention to whore. It's like people who, like, what? Why are you trying to be inflammatory? It's not even that deep. You know what I mean? It's not even that deep. But I think he tries so hard to be inflammatory, like, when he supported the Columbine shooters. because Or was it the Columbine shooters or was it Virginia Tech? Wait, is that, which one was it? When he supported the school shooters... He does it in the most inflammatory way. And it's like, dude, are you one of the crazies or are you just trying to be an arty, an artsy like goth kid? What, which, what are you doing? And that's why he's like kind of unsafe because he doesn't have the the willingness to like think about how he's coming off in public. And then he thinks he's doing something profound when you're not like you're not being profound by being controversial. Like, I'm sorry, like Dave Chappelle and all these people being crying about woke culture. None of you are being profound. You're just this part of history's um, complainers. That's all you're doing. You're not solving anything. You know what I mean? Like, you're not solving anything, which to be fair, none of us will and we'll all die. So it won't matter. But, you know, you do you. Max doesn't have any bound or doesn't have a boundary against me telling him I love him. Writing this post or even embarrassing him. If he has a boundary, he will tell me to stop. He will say something like, stop. If you continue doing this, I'll no longer respond to your letters on Reddit. If I embarrass him, he isn't going to punish me by going on stream to humiliate me and to find me as an insane moron to all his friends. That would be abusive and it would give him an extreme amount of control over my content and my art. True. What is this word? C-D-C-C? Seed? 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 This power? C-D-C-E-D-E? I don't know why I don't know this one. Um, overpowered to others voluntarily are called people pleasers. It makes it makes us feel like we have control over abusive situations by constraining ourselves as not to provoke the abuse. You want me to behave towards Max the way Destiny Orbiters behave towards Destiny. This is to become a pathetic beta cuck constantly tiptoeing around his undisclosed boundaries and putting being put in my place as if I dare to challenge my role in the relationship. Or put, sorry, being put in my place if I dare to challenge my role in the relationship. Right, so... Obviously, like there is this narrative that somebody can go like, man, I'm just really bad with boundaries, man. This is like so I'm a victim. But like you can't expect people to people mind read like if you expect people to mind read or if you're the one who's bad at putting down boundaries, you're still 100 percent responsible. People can't be responsible for boundaries they're not aware of. Right. That's so unfair. So, again, I think the problem with the parts of the internet that exist is like when people feel like playing victim, they can do it. But when they don't feel like it, they blame everyone else for playing victim. I mean, we're on a part of the internet where, where people will literally be the most v violent in language, the most blamey, the most accusatory, the most slanderous. 
And then they'll play victim when it gets turned on them. And then they'll be like, I can't believe you're doing this. Like my mental health is being like targeted right now. And it's like, what's happening? And it's just because literally it's just a very toxic space. And so that's why when Smith comes out to express his feelings, people are confused by them and assume the worst of him because they've been trained to assume the worst of everybody. Now, to be fair, I think you can assume ill intent on Max's part, but at least Max has sort of a, a value system you can sort of kind of understand. It's not reliable. I'm not a fan of Max. You know, he's blocked on my end. But at the same time, like, okay, I know how to deal with Max. Don't deal with him. That's how you deal with Max. And Max won't bother you. It's not like he's going to make, like, lots of content about you or something. So <laughs> it's called Terminally Online Individual. I mean, you know. So, again, this is the problem that we're seeing in these spaces is I don't see anything weird about these letters, but also it's like content. And again, people keep calling me content brained, but I don't know why you're on the internet making money if you're not a content creator. I don't know what this game is people are playing where they're like, this isn't just content to me. Okay, it's not just content to Smith, but when Smith makes content like this, it's gross. But when you do it, it's like not just content to me. I'm like, okay, right? Like we are in a space where men make a living calling women emotional children who need to be held, handheld by their fathers who, who can't consent to their own sexual activity, who are literally brain dead. But the moment the men are, are that we treat the men the same way, the men are like, what the fuck? You guys are such victim blamers, bro. It's like, I'm so confused. What's happening? It's like, what's happening over here? And it's just like, it's all what it is, right? So, okay. That's like the bubble. Now, Smith goes on to say, it's ironic that the more I shed my people-pleasing tendencies, define myself, give myself permission to be charismatic and become more confident, the more I get criticized by of coffee... The more I get criticized for copying Max. On the contrary, Max was the one Max was one of the only streamers in the Destiny verse that would think for himself in the face of constant shaming dismissal. To be fair, that is kind of true, but also like I do think Max is unhinged, but also I think Max has always been that way. To be fair, that's why he made the papers about the school shooters, right? He's always been that way. He almost got expelled from college except a, a teacher like spoke out on his behalf. Smith says, it's not that I am a copy of Max. It's that everyone is expected to be a copy of Destiny. Only in this bubble, obviously. Like, Destiny's nobody outside this bubble, right? He's only in certain bubbles on the internet, okay? Like, lots of people know him in the debate space. Like, like Vosh or Hassan. Like, you only know these people if you're in this space, right? I'm a lot more like Max than Destiny, and that's undeniable. True. But if it were the other way around, nobody would bat an eye. Also True. It's disturbing the more I grow into my own, the more I am dismissed as if being disingenuous. I'm getting used to it. At the end of the day, charisma is charisma. You'll keep coming back for another suck. Mm, Smith. Um, I think that's true in this space. So again, it's about the space you're in, the space you're in, the space you're in. Right? I think that's really important to say out loud. And toxicity does rule in every space. But that's because humans give in to their like base toxicity, which is why it's hard. Which is why I really pay attention to what YouTubers are kind of doing their own thing. Um, but then collabs are so nice. Like collabs are so nice. Like we're going to collab with Smith today. It's just so nice to collab because it's just so nice to talk to somebody else. But yeah, obviously there are spaces on the internet that are always going to be culty or parasocial. And there's always going to be a weirdness to it. I'm seeing it already with the new H3H3 H3 people. I love them. I'm so excited. But people are like, I can't believe you like Abba and Preach. Like I can't believe you just take Ethan's word for it. Or you don't watch them yourselves. Or you haven't seen how people grow. Or you think like, if you think Abba and Preach is like are bad people, but Ethan isn't a bad person, what are we even rating the badness on? You know what I mean? Like they're either both good people or both bad people. But there's no way that Abba and Preach are less bad or good than Ethan Klein is. Like they're both good people who are complicated and messy. You know what I mean? And I think that's totally different. But people get it into their heads like, what is a bad person? What is a good person? What is this person? Guys, unless you're raping and killing people, we can talk about the nuances of bad or good. You know, unless you're taking advantage of manipulating kids under age, we can talk about the nuances of bad and good. Unless you are literally like committing like war crimes, like we can talk about the, you know, not that we don't allow our presidents and our politicians to also commit war crimes. You know, it's just like, again, it's very complicated and it's all subjective because there's no objective morality. Like this idea that your ego isn't deciding who's good or bad is so funny to me. That's why you have to understand like all these people on the internet that are obsessed with writing about you are also just talking about themselves. They're never even talking about Smith. No one's upset with Smith. Nobody cares about Smith or Max. They only care about themselves. I blocked Max because of myself. 
I don't like him. He makes me get up. He upsets me. And I don't like that energy around me. And it makes me feel unsafe. So I blocked Max. I didn't block Max because of Max. I blocked him for myself. You know what I mean? Adrian says, I don't want to give Max the credit of expressing himself because he his takes are only controversial in their delivery. The actual substance is pretty ba basic. Yeah. I mean, everyone's pretty basic, though. Isn't everyone basic? What is and what are any of us doing that is truly profound? Which, again, is the frustrating part for everyone's ego in the space because they want to think they're doing something profound. Everyone is just doing a repeat of what other people have done before us. None of us are original. None of us have original thoughts. All of us are just being people. And it's beautiful, bro. I'm here for it. It's beautiful, bro. Right? Like Love says, hi, chat. Completely agree with uh, you, Brittany. Human's going to human. When is enough? Um, when is enough? Enough for real change to happen so we aren't killing each other to... Um, to do it, to be better, not to be ignorantly angry. Well, I think it's just a part of life. I think radically accepting the attachment to that change is so important. It's just what it is. It just, it is what it is, right? This is life. Like, this is life. Humans repeat cycles. We go through those cycles. And we're just living in this part of history. And our kids might remember us. Our kids' kids might remember us. But eventually, we'll just be the people in history no one remembers. And how beautiful is that, bro? But for while we're here, we need to feel important. So we do these things that make us feel important. But that's beautiful too. You do you. But like that's all it is. It's just performance. It's just a show. But it is, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like it's not that deep. But everyone makes it so deep and they write these horrible things about you. But they're really just telling on themselves. Look at, look at this. Look how they're obsessed with him. I've never written a Reddit comment in my life. Not that it's bad if you do, right? You know, not that it's bad if you do. Like write on Reddit if you want. But like how are you any fun? How are you any fucking different, right? There's the fourth post from eight days ago. Mr. Girl has a parasocial relationship with me. It's the way he wants it. The boundaries of the relationship as defined by him are such that it is a co-parasocial relationship. It's like the relationship between grizzle, uh, grizzled old serial killer in prison and their hot young serial killer pen pal on the outside, except it's a prison of his own design. How are you guys, have you guys ever wondered what it feels like when fish release sperm into the water? Do you think they feel satisfied as small as them wait what do you think they feel satisfied as them as they smell it and feel it all around them okay first of all typo second of all I think this is like self-aware so it's like fine but it is kind of interesting that that's the decision they've made I think it says more about Smith that he would consent to this relationship than about Max for having it it says more about Smith that he consented to the relationship dynamic than Max for having that relationship dynamic and I think that's what's important so that's, I think, what we're really observing here is this is about Smith. It's not about Max. The distraction is that people think it's about Max. It's not. First and foremost, I'm going to say it like this, like I said it to my audience. I got no icky feelings reading any of your letters because in my mind, they were not only an art piece, and art comes from the heart, hopefully, but they were about you and not about Max. And I think making it about Max is not paying attention that it's about Smith's feelings which have nothing and then something to do with Max, right? Because I really hold the belief that anytime we're upset with people or mad at people or have issues with people, it's something to do with us. And I do think that the world isn't ready to have a conversation about emotions, even though we've started to have it. They're already exhausted by it. They literally will complain. All we do is talk about our feelings. And I'm like, we just started 20 years ago. This isn't even a thing throughout history that people were doing and you're already burnt out. And then on top of that, because this is what inspired me, I wrote notes, Smith. This is what inspired me to want to talk to you about this. I'm from you know, a part of the internet or my work is always around relationships and interpersonal relationships. And we'll hear this like loneliness crisis is happening. Men are upset with women for keeping them lonely, but then they'll blame women for being emotional and they'll, they won't like meet women where they're at emotionally or won't talk about their own emotions or they'll say nobody cares about men's feelings. But when men express their feelings, people dogpile onto them and then make fun of them. And I'm like, oh my God, how do you guys live with this cognitive dissonance? Like how do you live with the un with the inability to introspect and say to yourself, hmm, when a man shows his feelings, let's see, should we dogpile him or should we actually like ask him how he's doing and what's up with this? And this is interesting. Can I learn anything from this? Like you even say in the letters, this is for the audience as much as it is for me. I'm giving you tools. And the audience just basically has a feelings towards you and then denies that they're feelings. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah. Like beautiful. Yeah, they... Uh I, I I definitely made the thing people were able to paint themselves onto it. 
And they did. Like, they really did. They told on themselves more than they thought. And it was so interesting to watch them do it. And it's almost like I have to ask, like, how much of it was orchestrated or predicted by you ahead of posting the letters? A lot. Okay, so um, because of my relationship with Max, I have this, I, I have access to um, the audience of his subreddit. Mm -hmm. So if I post something there, I know people are like, oh, this is Smith. But his subreddit is mostly filled with anti fans and haters. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, it's it's like uh, I re I had this epiphany, like hearing him talking about it, and I was like, like I have access to the most provocable artistic audience for like a in in so like I was like, wow, and then it inspired me to write that. For real, for real. So what have you learned through the process of writing these posts? It, I uh, I learned a lot about myself. First, well, it's made it's it made me healthier because I got um, I'm overcoming my people pleasing tendencies. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and they make me really stupid. And it's like it's like being on drugs mm. almost. Um, but I've learned about responding and. Uh, to criticism that is very projective and stuff. Mm. And I, I, it, it can really trigger the fuck out of me, but I also really don't want to crush it either. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's what I think I saw about half of your stream about am I good at criticism, handling criticism? And it's interesting because in this space, I, first of all, I love. I love really well-intentioned criticism. Something about it is such a good challenge to my thought process because I think about how I think all the time. I'm always thinking about how I think, right? Why did I do that? Oh, that's interesting. Like, why did I do this? And so for me, I love well-thought-out criticism, but this space really confuses like criticism with just trauma dumping or twisting a narrative or twisting the um, – like, it was interesting to see how sensitive people were about you sharing the letter on the internet. And I was like, well, what about this is private? And the, for me, like, it felt very, not to be such a theater kid, but it felt very like, this is, a perf like, this is, this is meant to be consumed. If it was a private conversation, I'm sure it would have happened in private. But obviously, yeah. since it didn't, that means it's meant to be consumed. A lot of that criticism also had an element of quit hitting yourself. And it was like... Um, like I'm being mean to you, but so it's your fault that I'm being mean to you. So if you don't like it's because I'm being mean to you, you shouldn't have done this. And I sh yeah. and I'm sorry that I'm being mean to you, but it's your fault. And it's like, um, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, thanks. I guess. I think so too. Now, do you feel um, relieved that you posted it? Excited? Uh, do you feel like you're still in the middle of the the performance, if you will? Um. No, I don't feel like I'm in the middle of the performance. Um, mostly that that part was all sort of um, short lived, but the actual conversation between me and Max is mm. the only thing that I'm still like really thinking about. Um, the replies you guys were having in the Reddit. Um, me and Max, uh, yeah, a little okay. bit. It wasn't that much back and forth, right. but yeah. Yeah. Now I want to ask you. Wait, let me look at my notes really fast. Mm. Oh. Okay, before I ask you that, actually, let me ask you this. I have a theory that the world is so without its basic emotional needs, um, generalizing here a billion people, but I think the world is generally not getting its required needs met emotionally, that people find themselves in positions where they either double down and claim they have no emotional needs, or they exaggerate their emotional needs so someone will pay attention to them to give them their basic emotional needs. Like a kid who like gets pushed on the playground and exaggerates how it felt just so they can get the attention that they they needed in the first place but never got. Like a kid who doesn't even get the basic. Like I felt in some ways growing up that my parents gave us a lot of emotional attention. And in those ways, we're very independent thinkers. But the ways that my parents neglected us emotionally with no ill intention just happened that way. Yeah. I felt like then I had to even myself go through teenage spirals of exaggerating my pain so someone would give me just the basic need I needed. Do you in any way feel like that's relatable to the either the conversation that's been happening around your letters or? Um, it's relatable to some of my thoughts I was just having earlier today. 
Um, I was thinking about boundaries. Um, it, like a lot of this has to do with boundaries, mm -hmm. but if 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 I have um, or if someone else has boundaries with me, if I have boundaries with somebody and they they're giving me feedback, cr cr uh, constructive criticism, um, and I'm always extremely receptive, mm -hmm. um, like a, like a fan, mm -hmm. then the quality of their mm -hmm. feedback is going to be like way lower because they they don't actually want to give me feedback they just want to get me to respond to them yeah so yeah. um i so yeah there's there's something to the um sort of like attention seeking need that people have and i think that exists in a world where boundaries are not clear and we're trying to push it as far as we can because actually we really have a deep need for boundaries and really mm. we're trying to a lot of people are just like fucking like right in your face screaming at you just tell me just like they just want mm -hmm. a boundary to exist they don't need, they don't know that they want that but i think that's a need that people have yeah well i think they i, I think it, obviously it always thinks that ha i have it has to do with us when people we make requests of people we're trying to make requests for something we need. It is about us. I think people keep saying, it's about you. I'm putting this on you. So you're the problem. But it's really about them. And so like I've even run into it over the years with my content where people will say like, hey, I want to give you advice on how to do your work. And I'm like, oh, pause. First, you're not a YouTuber. So unless you're a YouTuber, like your, your advice is like very much like a fan. But also like you're coming into my place of work and telling me how to do my job. Why? Like, why do you think that's appropriate, right? Like, I don't it go to your be, work. It could be a per, like a particularly creative idea that they're yes, giving to you. It could be. But, so that's why I ask, yeah. like, what is the intention of this? So I can listen because I need to know the goal of a conversation because I know it could go so many ways. So obviously when it comes down to people who are actually just trying to get me to change my opinions or trying to get me to voice their opinions through my content, I'm like, you become the YouTuber, bro. Like I'm not here to be your vessel. But also I think it's interesting that content creators in particular, even me, I have the hardest time explaining to people like we're content creators. This is work. It's a very serious job to me, obviously, but it is my job. I come to work. And then at the same time, it's obviously me. I'm not performing. I mean, I'm performing, but I'm not fully performing in a sense like this is me I didn't create a character my name is Brittany like this my mom and dad call me that's my name and like I'm here to express my ideas to the world but I think people forget like also there's a part of the performance so when I saw your letter I was processing it as real Smith having real feelings talking about something that's real to him and a performance for the audience to also learn from like a person who puts on a play that's about their life like it's still a performance but it's really about them and then you're realizing it's really about you when you say them and you you mean like you referring to the person looking at it the audience like it's about the performer smith and about the audience to get that tool yeah. from Smith, but it's really about them. So when we love art, when we say this piece of art really said something to me and then we get obsessed with the person who made it and then we meet that person and realize like they're not the thing that the art meant to us. What we're really saying is like this art meant something to me because it was always about me. Like a mistake I've always, you know that saying, don't meet your heroes. It's because yeah. we fall in love with the version of those people in our heads that has to do with us. So when I yep. see, so I have to have you a question then if you understand you that that's you've, makes you've sense, basically right? been you're you've basically been speed running all the topics that have come out of this. Basically. Oh, perfect. You're okay, now. so now it has to go on to that question about but that about the parasocial relationship with Max. Like how much of Max's parasocial relationship that you're having with him or whatever, however you want to explain that. Because I kind of think he's having one with you a little bit, but I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, he is. Right? Okay, <laughs> okay, good. Okay, I don't mean to put that on you guys, but it feels like that. Like you guys are using each okay, it other. It depends on it... how you define parasocial relationship. Like he explicitly says it's not parasocial and in w with a specific definition. With like oh. with, a paras with, with a par the definition that a parasocial relationship is a specific relationship where it's w like a... It's one sided. One person like doesn't know like about the other person type thing. Um, the the way you're defining it is more like parasocial is a feeling, and mm -hmm. in that way, and I pointed this out before, before him, um, because I also think it's funny. But we basically, I think we in that way have a co parasocial relationship. In fact, I think that he probably is more parasocial than me because he's the one holding all the boundaries, and I can literally tell him anything I think about him at, at any time, yeah. and he can't with me, and he won't. He refuses mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. There's something okay. That's funny you said that because I noticed 
Um, have you ever been in a group of people where it's like, oh my God, I love you. I love this person. This person is the greatest person I've ever met. I love everything about them. And in some ways you're saying that because you like the way that it's been going, but you can't, you, and in some ways someone might hear that and think you're vouching for them. Like you're saying, I know this person intimately, therefore I can speak on their behalf, but you could be saying so many things. That's how I feel like Max puts up this, and I'm not really, this isn't even about Max, this is about you, but like Max puts up this wall that allows him to have a distance, which then forces him when he's having a relationship with other people to actually have it be sort of parasocial because he can't allow himself to be vulnerable enough to have a real relationship. So therefore, it is only the relationship that is able, but then he has to fill in all the gaps of who you are, which is sort of the parasocial, like filling in the gaps, right? Because like, that's the danger of parasocial is like, you're not having the real relationship. So you're having the one in your head. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, that's not what I think is happening here, but that might be true about him. I think that the boundaries that he has with me are for me. I think that's possible as well, right? Can it be both or no? To tell, it, could be, it could be both, um, but I can definitely see how the boundaries are good for me. And I, I can definitely see how he knows that. It could be that they are good for him. And that would be, that that distinction is very big. Um, I, I wrote very small notes while I was working today, mm -hmm. like some thoughts I had. And that was one of the things I, I put, um, thinking about where you might go with this. What did I write? I said... Uh, Am I being taken a hold of by a narcissist or am I being uh, taken under the wing of someone who's uh, caring? And that comes down to the intention of his boundaries, if they exist for him or if they exist for me. Well, shouldn't they exist for both of you as a symbiotic like relationship? Right. I, but I, 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 he's done a good job of not um, letting me know how the boundaries are for him. Oh, interesting. Like I've had mentors in the past. So I also want to know how is he mentoring you? What's the relationship there? Because I know my mentors, great people. We also had a non-peer relationship. We were not peers. They were my mentors and we weren't friends. We were, I was there to learn from them and they were there to teach me something and they didn't know much about me personally. They knew just what they needed to know in order to help me with what they were helping me with. So there was always like a realness to the relationship, but it wasn't a close intimate relationship, even though it looking from the outside, it certainly looked that way. And it was to an extent, because I think there's intimacy with all relationships, like what is intimacy? So can you explain sort of your relationship with your mentor mentee relationship with Max? Yeah, I mean, I'll message him. Sometimes I'll talk about some things that I am going through related to my content. But really, honestly, he's not like a mentor mm. um, to me in the way of like the content. Um, mm. the, the thing, and this is this is kind of like weird, um, but you, you've said in the past that you don't really think you understand him. Mm. Um, I can relate to him in a couple of ways. I think that... I have some of the same mental illnesses as him. Mm. Um, and uh, there's a strong connection between mental illness and creativity. Mm -hmm. And the, dif the distinction there is if you're able to overcome your mental illness, then basically now you're a creative person. Hmm. And um, that, I mean, that's, that's not like a cold cut. That, that's, I mean, I think that that seems to be the case. If you overcome um, your mental illness, then you can become a creative person? Yeah. Um, so creativity in itself is basically um, very, the, the way it functions in your brain is has a lot of parallels with like cluster B, like bullshit, um, uh, like a psycho, uh, psych psychosis, um, even parallels with psychopathy. And the the distinction there i think is um, a creative person um there's also a correlation between um iq and being like highly creative mm. and i think that it's like if if you are so like the, there's just there's a theory that you could have the same person um they have a lower iq and lower support network all these things they end up just very mentally ill and then the same person um with a higher IQ would end up being just very creative because they're able to like create structures around their, their quote unquote mental illness that make it more of a positive trait 
that they can use. Mm. Like it's like a beast they've lassoed. Sure. You know, because it's a chaos that creates that allows you to create. Um, you have to be a little bit delusional to be creative. Um, that that's just what I've been thinking about lately. I've been thinking a lot about creativity, but mm-hmm. from that framework, mm-hmm. I I can relate to him as far as um, his people pleasing uh, tendencies and stuff, and the way that he's overcoming it. And uh, I think that may be part of why you don't really like him too, but that's what I like about him. <laughs> well, are you like his mental illness is the reason I don't like him? No, no, the way he overcomes it. Does he overcome it? I think so. Mm. I think the way he overcomes it, the people pleasing stuff, sure, um, presents in a way that is very distasteful to a lot of people. Mm, I will say in your letter to him, you said, oh, no, no, no. In your letter to, I think, the Reddit, you were saying that he actually isn't a conformist. And because of that, it frustrates people in a way. And I will say, like, for all of Max's flaws, he at least has values I can follow, sort of, which is what I rely in people is like, what are your values? So I know what your consistency will be. And even though I don't agree with the way that Max operates within the world in a sense but like that's a me thing that's my problem right that's a britney that's a britney perception um i do at least and can rely on him to have pretty consistent values if you can understand max enough so i can understand him enough to do that but also still place him in a box that i don't want to interact with all the same which is interesting versus other people if i can't latch onto their values very hard and i can't predict what they're going to do like reliability wise consistency then i do get much more nervous um like max makes me feel uncomfortable but not as much as he did before but also not any more comfortable than he did before either like i don't feel much safer <laughs> like thinking about max but you feel like really safe around him right like you don't have any icky feelings when dealing with him even though you said you felt shame maybe um, I, uh, the yesterday, um, I asked him, uh, how do you feel when, uh, when I, I, I've made, I've been making, uh, jokes about skinning you and sending pipe bombs to your house a couple times on stream and stuff. So I said, how do you feel about that? Do you want me to stop doing that? Um, and then he told me, um, that he like paused and he thought about it and he said, um, if you he, he like got really serious he's like if you do something that i want you to stop doing i'm going to tell you and uh, i'm not going to tell you how i feel about that mm. and that to me um the f- emotions that i get from that are um it's something that The first time you experience something like that, it's much more startling, and then it becomes incredibly um, relieving, and uh, there's a lot of security in it because I think that it is uh, he is just stable. I, I don't have to fight for him to give me boundaries. Um, I. And yeah, she's like expressing care for me, but also, um, yeah, it's it's just a lot of different things. Hmm. It sounds like a really safe space. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you're allowed to be, forgive my French, a little bit like a, no matter how rebellious or wild or crazy, he'll just be like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm like, I'm like a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel that as like an older sister a little bit where I feel like my job as the older sister is to have her siblings call her and tell her all the bad choices they're making. And for me to be like, okay, well, okay. Like if you want advice, I'll give it to you. But otherwise, like I trust you to go on your journey, like and do your thing. Um, But I also as the older sister have let go of any control over me making decisions for them. It's not up to me. Like I don't get to make those decisions. And so I wonder if like, I mean, that seems like a really nice space to have. Like, I've loved that in my life, being able to go to someone and be like, here's all my ugly. Are we good? And then be like, yeah, I get it. Like, I get the human experience you're having. So it sounds like Max is giving you an an opportunity to be like human in a way that other people haven't given you, maybe. 
Um, no, 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 no. What he, what he's doing is he is giving. He is not letting me people please him. And mm. so when I asked him that, yeah. I was slipping back. I was slipping back, and that's what I think I saw in him a little bit of anger at me for slipping back into that because me asking that is me just people pleasing him i'm trying to i'm trying to figure out how i yeah. can take control back so i need to know how you feel so i can make sure that i take care of you yeah and he's like no you're not taking care of me no yeah it's not it's not happening and that mm. is why it's like a scary thing at first mm. but it's like it's something that's important to have and and now i'm, I'm really glad for it and now i'm it's like i, I it, and I was dumber in that moment. He brought he he fixed my brain again for a moment. You know what I mean? It's like slipping. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Interesting, actually. Like I'm the not, way that he can yeah. do that is also like I could message him and he could just not respond. Yeah. How do you feel about that? What if that happens? The same same way. Mm. Yeah, he really is taking the burden off of you to like worry, I suppose. Or he's teaching you not because people I'm not much of a people pleaser, but I have enough of it to know that at least it could be a little like a loopy, like you could worry too much about things that are unnecessary. Is that kind of a part of your schema? No, no, no. no it's it's this is what happens. Okay. It'll be that uh so if I'm people pleasing you, um it's, it, and it, especially with somebody like you who is very verbose and very creative with how you think and you have a lot of a lot of thoughts mm -hmm. if especially if it was you uh which has happened with me if, if you in some to some capacity it was just happening and i noticed myself slipping a second ago and it means that my brain i'm stop I, i've stopped thinking my own thoughts and i'm simulating yours because i'm trying to take care of you mm -hmm. and i'm literally just feel like i'm like a lot of thc or like I'm, I feel retarded. Like I, I, my ability to process my own thoughts is like dramatically dis diminished because I'm taking care of you. It's like I'm trying to like run a virtual machine in my head about of you. What are the steps you take to know the difference between what's happening? I can definitely feel it. I feel that mm -hmm. it's like it's like molasses when it happens. Um, but that being said, that that when I was talking about creativity and like be, being from like a mental illness, that the the tool that he has for his creativity is also the tool that I think I have because when I'm not doing that all of that built up psychic skill of of simulating the other person is still there and uh that gives me a lot to work with creatively even if I'm wrong you know how long or I think like life is like all these moments of time, right? And like some moments left to a lifetime. How long do you think this moment will last between you and Max? I don't know. Mm. Does it matter? No. Okay. Forever. Well, until he dies first because he's older. Yeah. <laughs> or if you die first. Um, okay, that's interesting. What part of this is uh, like an experiment to you versus like you're actually like living your life? Even though you're always living your life, but how much of it is like happening naturally and how much of it is planned? Even the interactions with Max. Like what I'm doing right now, like like my just life in general like okay so you're having this moment with max and we're talking about the moment so we're observing the moment as it's happening i'm gonna sneeze oh my gosh thank you oh my allergies today so you were you're in a moment of your life you're literally living it this you're you're 30 right yep okay you're like living your life when you're 50 are you gonna look back at this moment in your life and think Oh, that was like, I didn't even know what I was doing then. Or are you going to say like, oh, I remember like calculating and being thoughtful and being focused and being, you know, really curating the moment to be what it was. I really wanted to learn something. So I remember taking charge. Do you feel like you're taking charge of the moment? Or do you oh, feel like? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Uh, I feel like, yeah, I'm taking the bull by the horns with my life. I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm, I've I've realized that I'm making a lot of. I'm gonna be an artist, 
I, I, I mean, I went to art school mm -hmm. and after art school, then I started freaking out, especially like that video I talked to you about, especially because of that guy and all of his insecurities um, got put onto me and it really put made me put aside my desire to be an artist and I just wanted to make money. But now I'm realizing I want to be an artist and what that means, it might be that I'm poor forever and I, I just want to like literally just be a janitor and, and do my, my art. And, uh, and if that makes me eventually not have to be a janitor, then that's good. Okay. And that's, that's a big, uh, big thing to accept. Yeah, it is. That's interesting. Uh, and by art, do you mean a painter or some different, like a content my creator? My stream is my art, my mm -hmm. videos. Um, I I don't like the word content. Mm. Um, content is like something that you would describe, like a word that you would describe for something that fills up the empty space in a box. Mm. It's the content of the box, you know? Um, but, uh, if you, I, I, like, if I, if I have like a vision, then, I mean, one man's vision is another man's content, you know? So, yeah, so. I think you're right. If to be, to be completely fair, to even contrast our work, like, even though in my life I felt more like an artist, I usually just feel like a content creator as of late and I feel pretty good about that. But I really like my content. Like I'm the I make content that I also kind of watch. Like I watch very similar YouTubers myself in my like leisurely time. And so for me, like I love this and I don't need it to be art. But I will say it also stops me from having a vision about my job and I focus on it as content creation. But I will say when I watch your work, it feels much more like an art piece, like your choice of using music the way you've done lately has really stood out to me of like, oh, this is like different. A part of me like hates it and a part of me like really yeah. likes it. And a part of me everybody's, likes, yeah. everybody's saying that they're like, either people are saying I love it or I hate it or both, mm -hmm. but I'm just, I'm, I'm really enjoying doing that. But yeah, it's, yeah, it, it definitely is going to make people not want to like watch my videos on their stream as much, but I put a lot of work into finding music that is not going to be copyright struck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Like it's a like even that. I'm like, "Oh, there he goes." Like when you you were talking, I don't know who, but you were like, "Okay, hold on." And then you like clicked oh, a yeah. song on, and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> "Like he's making an effort. There's something in it that's thoughtful and like he's making the decision and like he's doing it for a reason like oh what's the reason and also how do I feel about it and like your streams do force me like so, oh one time I like ran to the phone and I paused it and I was like why is the music so irritating and then I was like but I like the sound of it but I can't focus on the conversation and I was like what is he doing to me what is he doing to me what is he doing and then I sat there in my kitchen like wondering I was like what is Smith trying to do and then I was like you know what I'll figure it out and then I press play again and like look if that's the way you want to make art I think that is what art is right like you're evoking this like thing whether it's conflict or emotion like you're making me feel emotional I do think that you are a very artistic person an like, un artistic so, and, and no an artistic oh, an person art and, um... yeah um I think that in the way that um Max has harnessed his people pleaser <clears throat> I think like and I don't mean this to be like offensive or thing I and this kind of is funny because it reminds me of something you told me that you really disagree with not so erudite that she said about you but I think that you've harnessed the BPD to to be very creative in your thinking mm. you know mm -mm -mm. yeah it's interesting I think because I didn't know I had borderline until so late in life it doesn't feel like a main character to me yeah and so since I have always attributed everything about me I actually I'm gonna try to go get assessed for uh, autism or ADHD because I think that would explain so much more of my whole life than borderline I would think because even if I stand back to my earliest childhood memories like I'm always do you know who I'm aging myself here do you know who Punky Brewster is do you know that reference no that name I, I'm sure I've heard that it's before, an old but cartoon no but she's a very <laughs> loud colorful little girl and everyone growing up called me Punky Brewster 
And stuff like that was my life growing up. And I think that I always saw myself as an artist or wanted to be an artist. I was a theater kid. Like I wanted to perform. I wanted to tell a story. I wanted to be a writer. I've read like th there's a reason I read over 2000 books. Like I wrote books. I tried to get things published. Like my whole early 20s was me sending letters to agents and getting rejected. Like I've wanted to be an artist. And then I settled into a life in which I feel like I never cared enough to be the artist, like I'm not Lady Gaga. I could never obsess over anything that long. Like I always joke, I don't have autism. Yeah, that's exactly what I see in you. Oh um, yeah. Like I, I, I don't see the can't, um, but yeah. but I, what I see is you have the, um, you're absorbing a lot. You're, you're very scattered, but that means that you have that potential if you could focus. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I joke, I told my partner, I was like, if you get me on meds for ADHD, I'm gonna take over the world because I'll be able to yeah. focus on something. <laughs> like you better get ready, YouTube. But like, that's the thing is that I accept this part of me, but then I also am in conflict with her because like when I have my like, uh, like my little neurodivergent meltdowns or like I'm overstimulated to such a point where I'm like, I can't focus. Which thing do I do next? I'm like, oh, like this is so, and then I observe myself like melting on the ground. I'm like, you could have just made a decision. And like, there's no decision to be made. And the only decision to make is to melt down. And you're like, okay. But then I used to just put that shit on the internet, but now I don't want to do that. Like, I don't think the internet has earned my vulnerability anymore. I think the internet is like, only in certain spaces is it safe and only in certain spaces is your letters going to be received for what they are versus twisted in something ugly and malicious. Okay, that's what I wanted to, that's what I thought you were going to talk about like first and foremost, but okay. Like, I, and so I've been thinking about your fucking bubbles. Okay. And, um, I always have had a love hate relationship with this concept and I've realized what it is because I've, one of the first things that I thought about, in relationship with the letter is your bubbles okay mm -hmm. and because you know that is a bubble and i'm putting that into that bubble and so it sounds like from what you just said that you're saying that there that's not the bubble to receive it but also it's the right it's the right bubble for, i think for what i was trying to do yes yes okay okay yes. i'm glad that you're saying that well i agree I'm, that's not I'm, i also am disappointed that you're saying that because it, i wanted to argue with that but no. anyway no uh, you're anyway right. yeah so that's not gonna happen <laughs> But um, I, I, I don't like your bubbles because of the word bubble sure. to me. Um, I've heard you talking about popping bubbles. I don't know what you're talking about when you say that. But the word bubble to me is doesn't fit the way I would want to talk about it. I would want to talk about it as like light sources. Mm -hmm. And they there's no skin on the outside of a light source. Like, are you afraid and, the bubble will keep you trapped? Well, the bubble implies that, and also like the talking about like popping bubbles, like I like if you have like a green, uh, you have a blue light and a yellow light and you, uh, or like, let's say that you are a green and you go into the yellow light area and they're, they're all like screaming at you because you're blue, because that's how you look to them. Um, it's not that you've popped anything. It's just that their perception of you is different, but I mean, I just want to like, m I don't see it as like popping. I just see it as like, like interbreeding, you mm -hmm. know, like it's. Mm. Uh, yeah. So I always give an example of like, if somebody read your letters on that Reddit post and had a realization like, wait, I think Smith, Smith is like evoking something within me that is shattering my perception of what I thought that was ultimately true. And I'm realizing like, maybe something else is true that's like a possibility of a bubble pop he's they're having the realization like their perception is only that so like there are people who travel all over the world and never have a bubble pop even though they're visiting completely different cultures with completely different beliefs and completely different like modes of thinking but they don't have the bubble pop then there are people that go on one trip to mexico or you know france and they're like the world doesn't live like me and i'm like no and they're like Holy yeah. shit. And I'm like, welcome to a bubble pop. And then there are people who can have bubble hop, bubble pops as twos or threes or fours. My bubble is always being popped. I'm always reading something. I'm like, guys, bubble pop. I never knew this. Holy fuck. And then yeah, because it's because it's like it's like um, you be you were yellow and now you become a green, which means that you encompass both yellow and blue. So it's like you're mm. you're in a bigger bubble that encompasses other bubbles. Well, so, ultimately, like, someone... we are all in the bubble of the universe, right? Because we're all just an organism. Well, sure, sure. It. But the, the thing that I find frustrating is like someone like, like I'm very, very 
fixated on the language you use. You know, it's it's very weird for me. But <laughs> like, if, if I am in, if I, I I'll want to go to a bubble to have a conversation. Um, and this bubble exists completely within the the, the boundaries of my own bubble. But, Sometimes, but be, but my bubble is bigger than that bubble. So. I don't. I want to go there to have this conversation, but they they don't want me to be there. Mm -hmm. So it's like that that. So that's what I don't like about the bubbles. But I don't think you're wrong. Right. I think it's accurate to uh, actually to the observation of the world that there is these skins around these bubbles. But what that does is it's all to keep going with this like artistic metaphor. It's it's like it creates air bubbles within your own bubble that you're now the bigger your bubble gets, there are parts of your own bubble that are now inaccessible to mm -hmm. you. And yeah, I don't like that. That's why I'd rather just be light, you know. I yeah. don't want there to be skin. I want to, in any bubble inside of my bubble, I'm, I want to be acid, you know? Like you want to experience it all? No, I want, I want them to, I, w I don't want to be alone. I don't want, the bigger my bubble gets, the more that any other bubble inside of my bubble sees me as an, an other. I see my bubble is getting smaller with the more I know, not bigger. Because my, so Brittany created a bubble for herself. And the only other person I've ever inside of my, invited inside of my particular bubble is my husband and my cat. Those are the only people that live in my particular bubble, meaning they see the world in a way that allows me to unmask completely and speak candidly. I can be completely vulnerable with these people. I can like express myself in every way. And it's not, it's like understood and processed because we live in a similar enough bubble or we made our own bubble together that we together agree on like what is real and our perceptions are very similar, even when we have a difference of opinion versus when I hop into other people's bubble or like maybe you and I are forming a bubble right now. They're all different moments. I can have a bubble within nature. If I'm just sitting in a forest, I'm in like the forest bubble and I'm experiencing this part of nature, this real moment. But if I pop a bubble, which is a realization that like, oh, people live this way and it's very serious for them. It's like when Catholics and Muslims look at each other and they think I'm the one true religion. If only the other one knew. And I'm looking at them like, bros. You're the same. Like, you're the same. And everyone's like, you're not yeah. the same. But, like, you are the same. But they can't, they don't live in the same bubbles, but they live in the same Abrahamic bubble because they both have Abraham as their forefather. So they actually do share a bubble. It's Abraham's bubble. But then within Abraham's bubble, they form their own bubbles. And then within those bubbles, yeah. there's the different kinds of Muslims, right? Like Sunni and stuff, right? Is that it? And then there's the Catholics and there's the Roman Catholics and then the Orthodox Catholics. And then there's like these bubbles and everyone keeps pulling off into more and more bubbles. And then there's like countless thousands, billions of bubbles. I there's think that the mm -hmm. bubbles is all um, partly um, the, I do think that's absolutely the world we live in, but I think it, partly it's because of the way we engage with like social media and stuff. Like in particular, like one thing that I think forces this, like people into really like putting thick skin bubbles is like Reddit because uh, I will, I, I, for like a short period of time, I went into Reddit like super starry eyed and like, oh, this platform's actually really cool. Um, and then I realized if you go to any Reddit that has more than 2,000 people with a, like, I'll be like, um, have a slightly contrary opinion to them, but like, I think it, it's something you, you should find interesting. I don't think you've probably, mm. you, this is different from the other people you disagree with. This is a new way to think about this. I want to bring this here, see what you guys think. Fuck you, band. You're a bigot yeah. or whatever, you know? Yeah. And it's like, no, I just wanted to, and uh, so I think that the way we engage with social media forces is like, like re uh, Twitter, like it, it's all about like being hateful and mean and like fighting, fighting people that are different from you and, um, Facebook is more like purely the way you're describing bubbles. Um, I think, um, without any, like, cause, cause the bubbles sort of just happen the way they are sort of, there's, there's not too much in you know, mixing and stuff with, with Facebook. Um, I haven't been on Facebook in a lot of years. All I know is like either. the boomer side. Yeah. I will say like, yeah. um, so realistically, my my role as like what I would call, so this is what a five would think, right? A five would eventually get to the point, hopefully, this is the point if you're evoking five thinking, is like this is how the world is. It's a radical acceptance that the world is molded by our perceptions and is heavily created and built off belief, not our relationship to objective because like perception is our only mode of understanding. So the chances that we're interacting with objective truth is actually pretty like un probable 
but it's an interesting like thing to look for because my truth, your truth, the truth. That's why I think people create the mythos of God because he can see all even when like he knows the truth, Santa Claus, like he knows the truth, whether we like it or not. We actually don't have access to that. We have only access to what our perception, how our perception like processed information and how we feel about it and then the yeah. conclusions we make, right? Sure, so, but I, I, I don't, I don't want to like, I, I, I completely understand that like, um, I understand that a lot of the creative ways of thinking that I come up with, I always take with a grain of salt. Um, like when I theorized about me and Max having a co-parasocial relationship, like I was like, I, I, I made a very facetious post about that because I knew that, like I actually thought that, but also it sounds really funny. And I like, it, it's, I'm sure that it, 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 like, there's probably like more that I could learn or whatever, but I know that my, like, I, I don't want to devalue my perception. I want to recognize mm. that my perception is limited, but I don't want to devalue it. Well, whatever's happening between you and Max is obviously more than even we're able to process or perceive because we don't have access to the actual feelings or emotions or connectivity you guys are having. And so it's hard for people to see that and not prescribe like, oh, go see a therapist. Oh my God, this is mental health. Oh, this is so personal. Like the way people were, and that's really them telling on themselves. This is how I perceived it. So I need to tell Smith that's what I'm seeing. Like when I make content and I'm like heavily criticizing someone, ultimately it's about what I'm perceiving. It's not even what I'm saying is true. It's what I'm perceiving. Yeah, like, but that's why I don't want to shut that down because the way like like I, what I was just saying about myself, I, like the way that you're perceiving it, like could be even though you're completely wrong, could actually be really a uh, useful thing. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I think what's, again, when we're even having discussions about like good and bad and evil and joy and like all these things, we're having conversations about our perception of these words that are constructs we created as a, like as a species. We like gave a word to it and we're like, we've decided like this is what this is. So when you said parasocial, we're all reading that and having a different relationship with it. Or when you said, I love you. Oh my God, the meltdowns over the word love. And I have a panel I don't coming think up. I said parasocial in that letter. Didn't you? In the third, when the one were to the Reddit? I read it today with my viewers. Oh yeah, I swear. Well, yeah, yeah. The third oh. one that was to the Reddit. Yeah, to the but, Reddit, to the Reddit. But I'm using the word parasocial in a very specific way where I'm talking. If I say co-parasocial, like... Like, like if I'm defining it that way, honestly, though, this is why like it, like it's creative, but the extension of that worldview is that all people who have actual social relationships are all also parasocial because the moment that I stop talking to you now, my relationship to you is now parasocial to the extent mm. that I'm not talking to you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, a, it's a, what it is, is it's setting up a real, that's why. This is why on this part of the internet, I don't know how socially like inept everybody is, but like in real life, you go about not talking to certain people for a very long time. And usually what happens is people only remember you as that person they knew. And when they see you again, don't realize like, you know, time has happened. So change has hopefully occurred. And it's hard for people even in like outside real, like outside the internet to realize and to treat you as a consciousness that has changed. Have you ever had that happen where someone treats you like you're still this 15 year old boy from high school? You're like, what are you doing? I'm like 22 now. I'm 25 now. I'm 29 now. Things have changed. It's like people are having sort of a, they're filling in the gaps. They're not taught. They're not seeing you. They're seeing the version of you that stayed in their head. I think that I have, um, uh, an effect on people that makes that hard to, to happen. Mm. I think I have, um, like, a what is the, like the, I, I, I don't think that I'm a schizoid, but I think that I have um, the enigma effect um, just by virtue of being really introverted. Um, like a schizoid is like somebody that is like uh, like completely like kind of like I just kind of thought thoughtless and empty. But everybody thinks that they're an enigma. Hmm. Like, you, you know, you're really curious, but you don't understand what's happening. But I'm just so introverted that most the only people that i really c get close with um don't really have that experience you're talking about because i'm not so extroverted that i have that experience like so the people that i'm i, I will come back to mm -hmm. won't have been close enough usually to have that weird lapse experience so did, then does it happen on the internet when people are perceiving you yeah you've changed from the from the first yeah. time that i saw you on the internet till now i i'm seeing a different part of you Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I, right now my struggle is learning to love earlier me 
it wouldn't have been a problem if I didn't record it, but because I recorded it, nice. it's, it's something that bothers me and I need to love that me. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I think I, it's hard to know how much of that is sort of, sort of predatory or like malicious, not like predatory, but you From know, just trying, years. trying, trying to be mean. Yeah. I call them the mean autists. There's nice yeah, autists the mean that are autist sweet yes. and gay and into glitter. And then there's the mean autists that are like, I'm a logic bro, bro. And I'm like, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, like the first letter that you, that you probably read the one to Max, I, th I think I mentioned that I don't use Reddit a lot and now I've been using it a lot since then. And it's mm. like, so like we are acting like, and I'm like, obviously, no, I can't say that anymore. I said that on the first post yeah. and that was true then, but I can't say that now. That would be stupid or it'd be dumb. You know, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. true anymore. So, so you've changed, like you've already become like a new, you're like in a new, I'm a Redditor now. <laughs> yeah, a Redditor now, you know, that's so funny, but like that, okay. I love that idea of you trying to like almost pop these people's bubbles and give them a different perspective. But the dilemma is that that in order, that's why I say it's so scary to like be introspective because you would have to reframe how you even interact with the world. You'd have to have a different relationship with everything, or you could just double down and pretend you didn't have that like realization and be like, no, 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 no I'm not going to do it because the same people that get a thrill off writing you like i've never posted a comment on reddit I'm, like i don't have time for this but maybe i become a person in the future that wants to do that right but these people took time out of their day to write you novels about like what you're yeah. doing and then i'm like how are they not being parasocial with you like i don't even understand the cognitive dissonance of like how are they lecturing you about being parasocial with max when they're being parasocial with you Be it, because I think that there's this assumption. Um, I don't know how much of it is genuine, but there's this assumption, especially with Max, mm -hmm. of negative intent with that particular audience in particular. Um, and, and I think you've done it a little bit too, um, but not like that. Mm. Um, like he gives that off and people get that out of him. That people, he he's so unenmeshed with a lot of like he he's his in in his retaliation against his own people pleasing tendencies he's be, he's he's proudly become extremely unenmeshed with other people's um like needs um and other you know like like social like shit it's not he's autistic it's just he just he's like very rebellious against these like you know social norms and stuff like that and it real it does give him a stink that makes people think mm. that they they you know you're not a good guy are you you know it's mm. like that kind of the... but he is he might have autism because of his crazy sense of justice bro almost like he cares too much I feel like his. Um, ethical world view mm -hmm. um, is like kind of his art project. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's almost like he's trying to be a messiah. Mm. You know, it's like... <laughs> yeah, that's the unlikability part. Who likes a yeah. messiah, bro? Except like desperate people and i hate desperate i hate it in people it's gross well i like him mm. yeah that's like that part is interesting you know what's funny is like um i'm not gonna speak for my discord necessarily but i will say like in general my my assumption is like similar to me we like you or some people like you we think that's interesting that journey is interesting but we don't like max and so we're like what's he doing like what's this journey but obviously max is like this amazing tool which we all are to one another in a good and prop hopefully good way like hopefully you're not taking advantage of him and he's not taking advantage of you so hopefully there's that but you said something that i thought was interesting you said something to the effect of like because of the way that you feel or love him, it put, gives him the advantage in the relationship. I'm misquoting you, but. Um, well, that at that point, when I was writing that letter, I was further behind in my journey. That that letter was very good for me. And I'm speaking in I, I, I I'm I'm interested in how I'm speaking in Britley language, but mm -hmm. also I'm I'm not I'm not people pleasing you too. Anyway, mm -hmm. um. 
he uh oh when when i wrote that what was the thing you just said? I, I get me back on track. Something I don't know. like because of the way that you feel for him, he has an advantage in the oh, relationship. Yes, yes. It was because of the pe so is because I'm not telling him that I loved him. Um, because I was under the assumption from like early on in like our conversation and stuff. Like one of the first things he says is, "I think you actually hate me," mm. and. So I was literally ever since that moment people pleasing him and unable to and it made me stupid. And to fix that, I had to tell him that I loved him and maybe I do hate him to in 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 ways. And that's what I said in like the letter, the only way I can like actually access those actual negative feelings about you now is I have to actually tell you that I love you. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and then did you feel like relieved? Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah, um I'm actually like uh yeah i'm i'm I feel a little bit worried about him in a way that I didn't feel before, and this is this worry is not a reaction to him. it's a worry because I know that the way I'm thinking about him at least right now. I'm not people pleasing him in my mind and that thought worries me which I think is good I don't care that it worries me but mm. he's giving me that ability to not have to worry it feels a little bit to me like the truth will set you free but also now you have a new responsibility to the self because of this newfound freedom it's not it's a responsibility that I, I actually it's 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 the the part of me, the people pleaser is like looking back over my shoulder. Like, are you sure? You know, that's what I'm saying. It's not like a responsibility. It's the same thing, but it's not in control mm -hmm. of my decision-making mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Actually. <laughs> are you sure you don't have to, because if you actually say what you think about him, if you, if you actually are able to, to think about how awful of a person he is, that might hurt him. And you care about him. Don't you, you know, like, you you say that he has a stink on him how that might that make him feel seth mm. you know like you know like and yeah yeah hmm. so it's like so i've i've allowed myself to not be taking care of him there's something to this that connects to something but i'm not sure if it relates truly or if it's just my brain going in that direction and of course, making it about me. But it's interesting, like the bluntness in a relationship, how it can feel really freeing. I know some people felt that about Max, like he felt so real because he was just saying his thoughts, but it felt inauthentic after a while because it didn't match up with like any part of reality they understood. But when you can speak bluntly to him, does it just feel so real that it feels like the best, like, oh, this feels really good. And he accepts it and doesn't run away from it. Um, I think that, uh, like I said that I, um, I'm trying to overcome my people pleasing tendencies, but I don't think that I'm actually anywhere near the end of that journey. Sure. And so I think that the next time that I talk to him, I'm going to come to another hurdle and, um, it's just gonna, it does, it, it does feel like it's snowballing for me but with other people but other people will let you people please them and other people because so so like talking to him like for the first couple of times i ever talked to him i felt like it was like and i'm sure a lot of people feel this way actually this is something i think a lot of people experience with him that really freaks them out it felt like an extreme chaotic roller coaster and the reason for that is because genuinely with because my people pleasing has got so many layers and sh shit that's what i was trying to say before but before i move on for whatever the fuck i was trying to say. my um he is so direct and blunt and not trying to like he wants conflict he wants you to be antagonistic um he he wants you to say what you actually think about him Mm -hmm. um, he wants he wants it to go in those directions, and so as a people pleaser, you are like, <laughs> like doing all <laughs> these fucking backflips all over the yeah. place, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, 
That's weird. Why does he want the conflict? Because I want the bluntness without the conflict because I don't know why it has to be, why there has to be the conflict. I think part of it is the content because mm. I think it's what's interesting content. Um, but also that is, um, it's just like, I think that might be a need for him because without the conflict, he will start people pleasing. Mm. Without the conflict, he'll start people pleasing. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if there's like a, a, a moment where like you people please to avoid the conflict, but then you ha can't people please. So you create the conflict, but then you're creating the conflict to. And there always is conflict and he'll find yeah. it and then he'll put it right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's what feels disingenuous. Sometimes it feels like he creates the conflict by creating a myth. And then I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how do I, that's what I don't like about this whole space is like, you'll say something so innocent and then they'll turn <laughs> it and twist it. And then I'm like, I don't know how to have this conversation now because I'm not even talking yeah. about that. Well, and it's the chicken or the egg because the myth you're talking about is is going to come down to how he feels. But did he mm. muster that feeling out of a need to have conflict or mm. is it, it was it truly? And I don't think it's 100 percent either way. I think sometimes he might actually do that um, accidentally. But I do think a lot of the times he actually is not doing that. But that's a good that's a possibility. He could be creating a feeling just to have conflict without realizing it. Are your emotions or feelings a representation of the truth because they're happening or the truth because there's something that need to, needs to be dissected to see if they actually are the truth? Like, are they, they, do they always represent the truth just because they're happening or do they represent something that's happening but that might not be true? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Can you explain that? <laughs> okay. Um, well, this is like a borderline DBT thing, right? Like you have a feeling but your job is to dissect if it's real. Not that it's not happening. It's always happening. The question is, why is it happening? So when you say, I want to have like a relationship with feelings or like you want to know your feelings, are you learning something about yourself that you think is true or something that you think is happening or both? What's the difference between something that's true and something that's happening? Well, like I have feelings all the time that are happening, but they're not true. Like they don't represent any part of reality. So it's my job to say, okay, Brittany, like this is a feeling like you're angry right now, but your anger is actually attached to trauma that happened like five years ago and has nothing to do oh, with this Oh, okay. Moment. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, this is diff diff distinction, a distinction that we have in our worldview then <laughs> because I think um, well, while I can have a conversation about where my feelings come from and stuff, I think like, and I'll, and I will have this in a interpersonal, like close conflict that I'm having, like with someone I'm dating or something like the, my feelings, like I, I will hundred percent. And I want you to always know that I'm not like, I don't actually just think I'm right, but mm. I, my feelings are a fact. And, and the fact that I'm having them means that we should talk about it, but it doesn't mean it's you, but it's still a fact that I feel that way. Yeah. And so bringing it out there is not me saying like, so if I'm angry because um, I think you're cheating or something, that doesn't mean you're cheating. Right. I'm angry because I think you're cheating. Sure. So that is what we're talking about. It's like, yeah. I am angry that because I think you're cheating. So yeah. it does. I don't know either way. I don't want to decide either way, especially if it's interpersonally. I want the other person to be part of deciding. It freaks a lot of people out um, because they want you to have already decided. Mm -hmm. But that's that's part of my, and I'm, I just, in contextualizing this earlier today, that's part of how I am creative without being insane, by having creative thoughts without deciding that they are reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, at, like, why is, like, my favorite question. Like, well, why is that happening? Like, why does that feel? Which is, again, like, I again, a safe space with my husband. Like, obviously, I married him for a reason. Because we're allowed, we have permission to say all of our thoughts out loud without punishment and without like assuming the worst we assume the best and I'm allowed to say I have this feeling I'm having can we talk about it because I either need to figure out where it's coming from or I need to figure out if we need to do something about it or if I just have to write it like a like a, a an ep uh, like a not an episode but like a high like a shroom trip like sometimes I just write my feelings like a shroom trip where I'm like, I can't do anything about this. So I just have to write it and let it like finish. And then after I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Why did that happen? But I think that a lot of people either think they are their feelings 
or they are their feelings and they're neglecting their feelings. So they're neglecting themselves. And I think figuring out which one it is, is very difficult without the right tools. Or you double down and you logic your way through your feelings. And then the, the conclusion you come to though sounds right is actually totally fucking wrong. I just you know? don't, I just don't choose. I just, uh, I just hmm. go both. I just, just live with both. I just do whatever makes sense for them. I try to be, I try to dissect obviously. And then like try to come to the most rational and reasonable decision. But also the answer also has to make sense with the valid, by validating the feelings. Like, yeah. Hey, I just, I just want, I just want to live in a world. This is not the world we live in. I just want to live in a world where I can tell someone how I feel like, um, like, like this, this would be so much better with the type of like um, projective criticism we were talking about. If you just just tell me how I'm making you feel, and you know, like 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 just straight up, and that doesn't necessarily mean that like I am, like that could be you, it could be me, but mm. just like that's the fact of how I'm making you feel. And I want to live in a world where we I could just tell people like, um, you, like if I'm telling you right now, like what you are saying is like freaking me the fuck out. And that does not mean that you're doing something wrong, like, but sure. that is how I feel. And so that's, I think it's valuable and important. So, and, and if we had, I believe that in a world where we just do that, it, like we would be the amount of what I think you are defining. I don't like this type of thinking, but I don't, th what you're defining is kind of like irrational, like, um, like your irrational emotions. I think that those unhealthy, maybe like misattributed emotions will happen less because we will be more self-aware and aware of others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, ideally, I think I said this, I don't know where, but I said, ideally, I'd love to live in a world where like people could just say, oh, I did this action. And we go like, okay, now what? Versus this fear of saying it out loud or this fear of expressing a thing. Like I wish we could just, I mean, obviously I curated a bubble where that's possible with one other person. Because I've never been able to do it with all people all the time. It takes a lot of seeing a person and trusting a person and knowing their language and the nuances of that person, I think, to do it, which is why I think like you have to see the whole part of people. Like I can do it with my husband, which is why I chose to do life with him. So we could go throughout life being able to do this. You can just do it, but you might they might hate you. Well, that comes down to not seeing, right? Because, or not trusting or not understanding, which is why I say like, I can't see all people because if I could see all people in all ways, which I don't think is possible, we could have this connection that would be non-threatening because like, I have no ill intent, bro. I'm not going to hurt you. I am never going to lie about you. I do not slander people. I never lie about people ever. It's like very important to me that I never do that. But to, for a person to really believe that, they would have to see me and understand me. Therefore, when I make a statement that to them is shocking, they'd have to be like, Brittany's not lying. So what is she saying? But you cannot do, you, do that with you feel most like people, you have, right? You have to prove it first or do you think you can prove it by doing it? Because I think the most, the most, because like, I don't like the, this is, I don't like the, if you prove it to somebody by doing it and them being like what the fuck i don't know what's going on but then they realize like actually this is not a malicious thing and this is not a dangerous thing they've learned that within themselves but if you convince them that it's okay before you do it they haven't learned anything you're just completely like baby step like come like like walking them like this foot yeah. here this foot here the, the whole thing so they actually haven't grown yeah, well, so obviously they would be learning the skill within themselves to tell the character of a person and then to judge like the values of that person and the consistency of their character to those values. So they're learning something to, like I always say, I didn't choose my husband as my husband because I trusted him. I did it because I trusted me to choose him. And he trusted himself to choose me. He didn't trust me. We're not trusting each other. We're trusting ourselves to understand that person enough to pick them. Which is kind of saying the same thing, but it's putting the responsibility on us. And I think other people yeah. put the responsibility on other people. To know their feelings, to know their intention, to know their values. Instead of saying, do you trust yourself to judge the character of this person? Even if you're going to be wrong. Like, I was so wrong about Max. I pegged Max for a very open-minded, curious, sex-positive, thoughtful, excited, like, artist who wanted to do interesting, fun, collaborative you don't think things. You he's those things? No. 
No. When he came to talk to me for that first time, I was completely confused. I think, I think he really likes you. I'm sure he does. I'm very likable. <laughs> is that shocking to you, though? No, I'm very likable. Everyone loves me. That's why they hate me so much. No. They all love me. What does that mean? It's because they <laughs> see something in me that makes them go like, what the fuck is this? They wouldn't talk to me unless there's a part of me that they like. That's just what I believe. I believe that's so hard because like, why? I could never imagine. Maybe that's my autism. I could never imagine talking to anyone that I didn't like a part of. I think that you have a lot more in, in common with Max than you realize, but I think a lot, you know, you, you open your mouth a little bit. No, no, no. It, I, made, I but, but the thing you. is, I think, I think that you get away with some of the stuff that he does be, just because you're a woman. And you're like being a woman makes you makes you because what a lot of what he does in his philosophy is very intimidating. And so just be, by being a woman, people are like less intimidated and it makes you look like a really strong, like like empowered woman, too. So like you get like kind of a, it's almost like a boost. Depends on know? the bubble and other bubbles when people hate me because they don't trust me because I'm not because I'm too harsh and aggressive as a woman. You yeah, can't true. win, buddy. You can't win. Yeah. Right. So Max and I, I thought, listen, do you know what ideal moment I had for me and Max? I even told my friends, I was like, bro, I met this guy named Max on the internet. I think he's going to do a great video film with me. They're like, what do you mean? I was like, I have a film I want to do with him where it's like, I have a thing for like pain tolerance. So I play slapping games with my brothers. We play competition games with like working out. We like, we're into like, who's the stronger person. So I want us to do a video of me and Max doing a slapping competition and like to see who like how it felt to like slap each other, but it was non sexual, not sexual at all. Like it had to be somebody yeah, he who wouldn't. Like, he, he wouldn't let you say that one. No, so he again, would tell like, you it's sexual. Yeah, that's the problem. Like if you always see everything <laughs> is sexual, like I don't know how to relate to you because I'm like I don't know what's happening. Have you never? Interestingly, done... yeah. I did that as one of my uh, my one of my paintings for college. Wow. I um. I did a, we had to do a diptych. So I did two paintings of this, this girl uh, that I was friends with mm -hmm. and had a crush on. Um, not the one that I was talking about in that other time. Anyway, uh, so the first one, I made her laugh. And then after that, I slapped her across the face. And mm -hmm. so I took both of those pictures side by side and painted yeah. them both. Yeah. I think there's something really like, again, I practice like non sexual, masochistic BDSM, but also in my vanilla life, because I have a vanilla life. Obviously, I'm doing things that are competition based, like slapping competitions. I'm pretty sure I could win all of them. That's a joke. I cannot beat those men. Those men are, have you ever seen a slapping competition? Those men are brutal, right? Yeah. Like brutal. But there's something in me that wishes my body could withstand it. But I, I can't. wish, I wish, I, I've wanted this for a long time. I wish that I could join a woman's um, what, roller derby. Yeah. I wish I could join a woman's roller derby and just. You know, I don't wouldn't want to like transition or anything. Just be me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, I'm telling you, like that's the thing about the internet that's so funny about these bubbles. Because like I'll see people review my work and I'm like, damn, I'm not even. I have no idea what you're talking about. But they're like, Brittany knows this. I was like, girl, I never heard anything you've ever said. Like I don't even know what you are literally saying. But like the assumption that we all say words the same or words mean everything the same is why I think um, we do confuse people, that we project ourselves into them. I looked at Max and thought, oh, he's making art and he's making porn art. And like, oh, like we're doing the same thing. And then I was like, we are not doing the same thing. I'm so sorry, my bad. And you have some differences, but but I don't see how you can't. I'm like incredibly the, okay, sex so positive. I think the body is neutral and beautiful. I've done parades with families. I think nudity is neutral. Look, I think sexualizing everything sucks. Like I don't, I can't. His vibe, he's so sex negative, bro. He's shameful. He's not, though. I have no shame when it comes to sex, zero. I feel like he has tons. But he's, he's not, okay, I mean, okay, fuck. Maybe I'm talking for myself, but I feel like everything is sexual, but doesn't mean I'm shameful. Why is everything sexual? How is that possible? There's no, see, I've lived too many lives. I've been to too many events, too many situations where I know life is not very sexual. I would argue life is not very sexual. It's probably less sexual than everyone thinks it is, especially in neurodivergent circles. It's not. It's not as sexual as people make it out to be. I mean, uh, yeah, but like, I'm not always thinking about sex all the time. Sure. But I could think about anything in a sexual way. I could think of anything in a sexual way. But I also think most of the things that people think are sexual are like so neutral to some of us that our brains are just not going there. 
Okay, you know what I but mean? The, the human body, I think. Look, look at this. Too. So, so I what, think who's that human body, Smith. Like, who's hold human on. body? Grandma. Yeah, I think that our bodies are like I. I'm kind of pro nudism. Like, okay. I wouldn't advocate for like a switch. Just you know, like that would be bad for everybody. Um, you know, the rape and stuff. Um, so if you didn't change society, you're, more to, you're not more likely to get raped if you're sexually promiscuous than if you're not. No, I just mean if we had like nudism, like everybody, like if if, if we had... just if if we people if we got rid of like laws against wearing clothes and then random people just started going around naked, it probably would cause a little bit of chaos. Anyway, sure. Anyway, um, I am pro nudism as like an idea, but I also think that your genitals just are sexual. Like I think that Period? like seeing each other. Like you can so so in a nudist world where you're just hanging out and being naked around each other doesn't mean you always want to fuck, but if you stare at someone's genitals, like it's oh it's a, yeah I mean but like that doesn't mean that like it has to be a sexual moment all the time but there is always like sexual tension like very like like very like small amounts and I just just think that that is you know always like part of our brain like it's not like a lot. Yeah, I just can't. I used to think that way until I started hanging out with nudist groups. And then I was like, oh, damn, like you forget people are even naked, bro. Like you don't care. Like some people have different struggles with it on a spectrum. But I just know from lived experience, though anecdotal, that just isn't true. And lots of us hey, are having so, different. So, yeah, but, we're, so, but I'm I have the lived experience of knowing it's not true. You only have the lived experience of knowing it is true. But you haven't met or haven't done or haven't read the books or haven't experienced so you haven't hit that bubble yet, right? Have you, like, well, literally, wait, I, I, in I, Seattle, there is a family event that happens every year where, like, families and kids are there and people are naked. Why do you think that's happening? Because everyone's well, thinking I, like, about sex? No, so I think in a nudist world, like, I, like being it, pro-nudism means that you you are accepting that there not, are kids it's naked, too. It's not just too. a nudist event. It's a public Seattle event. Anyone can come. Most of them not nudist. Sure, sure, yeah, but, the, like, that, the, like, I'm saying philosophically it's a nudist sure. event. Like, it, okay. it's... Yeah. Yeah. It's so, pro body because it's saying but, the body but is that neutral. Does, that doesn't mean that like people are expected to be like fucking kids and shit. Like I'm, I'm not saying just mm -hmm. because everybody's naked that means like you're expected to look at a kid and think you're like you want to fuck them or like that's mm -hmm. you know okay or or something. I just think that. Wait, wait. My chat asked this question. I saw it just now, really quickly. Have you ever sat around with your partner naked? Is it always sexual? Have you ever just been like naked with your partner? I ha I have, but I have trouble finding partners that are. Um, I don't. I don't. I haven't done a lot of finding partners through um, like kink type things or anything. So, um, what does that have to do with it? I don't know. I so I, I just find partners like that. Sex tends to be like a, I am way more exploratory and um, like nudity, just being naked together. That's something that needs to be uh, most of them. I almost, I, I think every partner that I've ever had was a, a victim of sexual abuse at some point, And that causes a lot of limitations, um, we, especially since I'm not like a rapist. So, and, and I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm end up being very, uh, taking of like a big step back, uh, in almost in it's like, like, like almost in like the like I'm, I'm like often like the first guy to not like be that guy and and that means that sex is now like impossible because the only thing that you're used to is guys being really aggressive and stuff like that and uh sure okay that's a little so, tough yeah that and can, uh yeah. that's interesting and i just want to say for my audience and people listening like being naked with your partner has nothing to do with kink right being naked with your partner has to do with trust. I'm just and saying love body and positivity and body like, posit and uh, I'm only saying like, this because I've recently been criticized on the internet about people who don't know what kink is. Like kink is very specific. BDSM is very specific. Like these things are non sexual. I'm not saying sexual, it's a like, kink. Okay. I'm not saying well, it could be a kink, but it um, could be. But like, it's I'm something, talking about I want I want a relationship where I can just be jerking off and then my partner enters the room and it's no big deal and then yeah. they just get whatever they need. But I've never had a relationship like that. And yeah. it seems like like really nice, but never had a relationship like that. Yeah. So like obviously I would say that comes like that's 
I would say that comes from sex repression because the world is sex repressed, but also we're not neutral about bodies. Like I've done that. That's all my relationship. You just described all my relationships. But it is sexual though. You, like, so your partner walks in when you're masturbating. It's like, it is sexual, but it, you're well, not, it, it's, it's, it's sexual, but it's not like you are, you are giving them permission to have a sexual experience with you uh, or, or like, it, it's just like, there are still boundaries. So like, um, so, um, I remember talking to somebody, um, they said that they don't feel about the whole masturbating, like near each other and where that are being a big deal. And they said that anytime that they had anything like that, then the guy would always assume that, or, or think that, oh, well, well, why don't I help? Why don't I get involved? And, and that is like, so now it's just not going to happen anymore because I didn't want to do that. So, um, yeah, I don't think that nudity is a breach of boundaries. Boundaries still exist when there is nudity, but that doesn't mean that there's no, there's no sexual tension or anything. If you're going to be comfortable to masturbate around each other, the sexuality exists, but um, it's, I think have, the... Do you have siblings? The, I don't. Oh, okay. I've been naked in front of my sister a thousand times. We've gone to bathhouses together for women. Like, is there supposed to be sexual tension there that I'm confused about? Like, I don't know. No, the answer is no, Smith. <laughs> the answer is no. Nudity can be neutral. Have you ever been naked with family members? Like, I just feel like it's yeah. really strange for me. It's weird. Like, I feel like there's trauma in so many Western communities. <laughs> It's weird. I mean, but I, but I'm also comfortable with it. Like I say, it's weird, but it's not like I'm I'm like yeah. a, I have like carried my mom like after you know like surgeries and stuff like naked from like yeah. the toilet See? to That's like, like whatever. Loving and vulnerable and like you're caring. Yeah, but for that her. vulnerability is like it is weird in that way too. And like I'm accepting of it and okay to do that. Um, like um, I have in my childhood felt the sexual gaze of my mom. Mm. And I did not feel, though, that she was making it my problem. Hmm. Um, I did. I was aware of it sometimes, though. Are you? Sh that's. Inter I've never had that experience. I don't even know how to relate to that. Tell me about that. Like, what is that like? How do you know what's happening? How do you know it's not your child brain confusing something? Or maybe it is. Like, you would know. Like, I'm not discounting you, but I just I don't think have it, any relationship. I don't know. To that. It might be. Um, it's it's something I'm still unpacking. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it so much. That's right fair. Now. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. So, do you want to switch over back to like Max and your relationship there, or how are you doing on spoons? I'm fine on spoons. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. I guess now that the we're thing, talking. The thing, the thing with me is spoons is if I start people pleasing, my spoons like dwindle because that is exhausting. But if I'm talking about myself or whatever, like I can just I I can just go on forever, and it's almost like I've discovered this endless well yeah. within me. Well, then I am curious then, I'm mostly, okay, so this whole conversation leading up to now is me trying to figure out your brain, but also how your lived experience informs like everything you're doing now. I have been, so some a similarity that I have with Max is I have worked as, as a nude model. Yeah, you told me that last time in an art school, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's honestly- It felt sexual. That's amazing. It is sexual? It feels sexual. Interesting. They don't, you're, you're, they're not allowed to admit it. But it does feel it. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if that's a, like a if you're willing to understand that that's like a specific experience for a specific category of people. Like lots of people do that and don't feel that. I think they're lying to themselves. I think it's weird <laughs> to think everyone's having your lived experience. No, I just think that. Um, I don't think that they're experiencing it like that. I just think it exists without them being very experiencing as it, it being very big part of their experience. When you are, I, I like I, if I'm modeling for a sculpting class and you're taking the time to specifically sculpt my dick. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Um, I also, I was yeah, I'll, like I did some modeling for just some, just some like house parties and some like a, like a group that we went to like each other's houses and like modeled and stuff. And I would do like poses where like, I remember one 
where I took my belt and I like put it around my neck and I like held it like that. Mm. And uh, and then people are like, oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why you love that one. Well, it evokes a lot of emotions, right? It, allow, it evokes a lot of like life and death thoughts and like. I guess. Like, okay, that's the thing. It was thing. hot. But it is, but it's something about hot is also not sexual. I don't like, know. How about, get... how, about, how about the one where, where I, had, I was like laying on my side and I had some, uh, and I rested, uh, like a, one of those long like glasses of like champagne mm -hmm. um and i put that on my hip and i was laying on my side and i was like is, how about this and they're like okay but if you fucking spill it you, you're you're gonna be in so much trouble and then uh, and that became a very uh very, very sexually charged moment i felt because of the especially because of the threat too yeah. and that made that made it drawing for it for everybody a little and but that was part of the fun I will um, say it's it, very but, valid to have a sexual experience and you can only practice it sexually. That's valid. I'm just saying it's not the only way to practice it. Um, I was talking to my friend Connor the other night mm -hmm. and we're talking about he loves the game Death Stranding and it's a very um, polarized game. Some people hate it. Some people love it. Okay. And he was saying that about we we're talking about convincing people of things and he was saying it's not like I'm going to go to people that don't like it. And then try to convince them that their 50 hours of game play, game t play time, they actually loved it, even though they think they didn't. Sure. Um, but I think that you could tell somebody that they, um, like, you could, you could teach somebody who wanted to be taught how to play it and how to think about it to enjoy it. And that it doesn't mean that that isn't there. They mm -hmm. just aren't focused on that or that isn't something they're accessing when they're in, in, engaging but it doesn't mean that that part of them doesn't exist and that's yeah i think that most of the time people are lying about things not being sexual i think you're creating a worldview where people don't get to exist now you formed a bubble where people's real experiences don't get to exist and i'm saying your experience is real but so are other people's um, I think I think it's on the same level of like you are talking to a black person and then you say that you don't see race. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's a lie. You do see that they're black. Sure. So I, and I think it's like you're like a, like a um, heterosexual man talking to a heterosexual woman and like. It's like, I, I don't, I didn't notice you have a vagina. It's like, no, well, just, you noticed. Think, <laughs> but like noticing a vagina doesn't mean anything automatically. I think for some people it does. And for some people it doesn't mean anything. It's just a vagina. Like, oh, there's another vagina. Okay. Well, I believe that the people that say it doesn't mean anything, it's not because I think that they are playing Death Stranding for 50 hours and they are not focused on the things that are enjoyable about it. But like, I'm, so what I'm saying is it ex that exists. They're just not looking at it. Yeah. I'm saying they're thinking, looking away from it. Right. But I'm saying like to think that way is also to it's own your, my worldview is offering multiple options for multiple people to exist. And yours is only offering one. And I'm saying though, that's true for some people. It is not accurate to the lived experience of many people and it, again, you're doing the like you're doing the discounting because you're I'm unable just... to imagine someone different could exist. No, 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 I, no, no, no. I, I, I think that they exist. I just believe that it, that their experience is path. path I don't know if the, the right word because usually the word pathology refers to like a negative thing, but I'm so. But that's not what I mean. But I'm just saying, like, I, I believe that their experience is the way they describe it, but it manifests that way from a psychological place or a pa it's pathological it's it's a pathological way of getting from point a to point b and i think that the sexuality exists within there i just think sexuality is so diverse amongst the humans as a species that it's obviously clear that people are asexual and demi and people are having lived experiences that some people don't have sex drives some people don't even have an interest in sex some of us have a lived experience with our bodies where it doesn't even feel like we're connected to them not everyone identifies with their bodies some people just identify with their right. mental so well, again people, people that don't identify with their bodies i think that that's not like they're not living in reality because you are your body Oh, I totally disagree. Absolute disagree. I think you're, I think okay. you're many parts. Like I think I'm my consciousness, like my soul. 
I think I'm my brain. I think I'm my body. And I think I'm the things that happen to those things. But I'm I think not, those are all one thing. That some people believe that. Some people are having that experience. I think that it's clear they are not the same thing to me and many people who feel that way. But I can understand how that is the reality some people feel like they're experiencing because it's about perception. You are your perception. So your perception limits or limits you in all ways. I'm limited in ways like we're all limited. So your perception perceives it that way. Mine doesn't. I mean, I, I do agree with that. Mm -hmm. But I theorize mm -hmm. that 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 the, the separation, um, the compartmentalization of those things is sort of a dissociative way of thinking. Why? Because I think to not identify with your body is to dissociate from it. Because do you mean identify purely? Like I think it's a balance between all the things that are connecting. I think it's not like we don't like it, uh, there are tons of moments where I'm not thinking about my body, and from in those moments, I guess definitionally, I am dissociated from my body. But I don't define myself as that. I still think that I was always in my body the whole time. And I always was my body. And if something was happening in my body, it would affect that thing that I thought I was when I didn't even realize I was my body. Like if you put my hand and I'm dreaming, you put my hand in warm water and it makes me piss myself. Um, it, it's because my dream state, whatever it was that I didn't, wasn't even associated with my body at all, actually was my body the whole time. Mm. Yeah, I could see that perception. I think I think it's hard for – I think more like we're ships and I'm a soul on my ship. And what happens to my ship is happening separate from what's happening to me, even though it is happening to me. That's the whole. It's not happening to me like my core. Like I'm not my legs. If I lose my legs, like I didn't lose me. I'm still a whole Brittany. I think you're still Brittany. Um, you're still the whole Britney that exists. Because mm -hmm, my you're, consciousness you're, is... Compared to the Britney that existed then, you would have... You would be less because you have less legs, right? I don't know. I don't consider my body a representation of my consciousness. I think this is just the thing that holds it. And my brain is like the computer that works like the the consciousness, right? Like my brain too. Like if I'm in a coma then like I'm still there, but like my body isn't processing it enough to explain it to people maybe. Or like my husband and I talk about this all the time. Like what if I'm in a coma or what if I have Alzheimer's? Like I'm still somewhere there, but like my brain is doing something different right now. But some people believe when you have Alzheimer's, you're no longer yourself. You're like somebody different, but I don't believe that. I think that the Brittany that you're talking about, like so body, legs, no legs. Mm -hmm. The Brittany label, um, the Brittany identity, um, I think that that exists within a social web of understanding and you still exist within the social web the same way, but the social web is a mythology that we've all created. I think all identity is like a mythology, all hierarchy that we've created. It's all mythology. It doesn't mean it's not useful. Um, it doesn't mean it's not very real to us, but it's, it's not, the bare bones reality. What would be the bare bones reality? You're just a body, you're just some meat, you know? Your thoughts are all your brain, you know? And your brain's your body. And then we, we, we don't usually engage on that level. We usually engage on the level of this social web that we're connected with all these other people. And that's the ideology you're talking about, we're talking about here. This is something that Max disagrees with you on and I also disagree with you on but it's because of the thing I was talking about earlier and he's disengaged from that um, because he's trying to not be enmeshed with that web he doesn't and I see that too and I see the benefits of that because I can relate but I feel like he has a lot of spite towards that web too because he's like sort of resentful of it a bit too or something Whereas I'm talking to you about it in a way where I'm not, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I just don't really understand the idea that, like, you, like, my my brain <laughs> and my heart are different. 
my body is different. My body is like a hollow vessel that holds all my organs and it functions as a ship to hold my consciousness. And that consciousness is like having a relationship with its reality and knowing like, oh, my brain is doing this and my body's doing this. You could call it whatever. I think it's all possibly the same, but with different words, right? Like sprayers, me- prayers, meditation is tarot is everything. Like everything is just everything. But ultimately we put our our words, our definitions to things because our perception is, that's how our perception is had. Like that's what our perception is saying to us. And so we're coming to these conclusions. I don't think we have access to objective truth. I don't believe in objective morality. Like I don't, I, don't, I think. I agree. Everything's like I don't, this I don't, construct, right? I agree so, with that. But like we're all having different experiences. And I think some humans have more access because of like their choice to do it. To have this experience with the body that makes everything not necessarily sexual versus some people don't ever get to access that because they don't ever go on that journey. But I do think it's a journey you can go on. But I think, again, depending on the person you are and the tools you've been given, you might not be able to access it with a, without first dismantling things that were put into your brain, like through trauma, like that memory of your mother, like not to bring it up. But like that is different than someone else's experience who doesn't have that. Like that's a tool in a way that you have that someone that's doesn't a, have. That's a- that theory, especially considering I said that, that does make sense. But I also have the same opposite theory about you or like anybody that's saying that never, everything is not necessarily sexual. I think that what makes things non-sexual um, is especially trauma. I think it's it's about recognizing... Um, well, sexual is very specific to me. Maybe that's it too. Sexual means something to me. Like sexual, like means something to me. When people say like, oh, you're making it sexual. Like that means something to me very specific. So in my brain, I'm like, how could you even make this sexual? Like, I, don't I even think know how that to do that's it. what it is. That's, I think that might be what it is. Um, cause when I say sexual, I'm, I think I might be defining it in a much more broad way. Mm. And, um, I think it's healthy to do that. Is it kind of like when girls, like the girls and I, like the girls, gays and theys, like when we say like we want to be slutty all around each other, it's not sexual. And then guys are like, what the fuck? What does that even mean? Your tits are out. Like, I mean, literally, it's but not the guys sexual. won't admit. No, no. The guy, but the guys won't admit that when they're fucking in the locker room, like swatting each other with the rolled up fucking that's sexual, too. If you're going to say that about the women, it's also true that you're yeah. you're fucking jerking off with your bros. Yeah, I think like things are so much more than they are. And people don't allow themselves to admit it because they don't want to have to then ask themselves what something means and i think again i'm just curious about like oh what does that mean oh what does that mean like what is if i know more answers to who i am like i have a very short time on earth and then we die it's like i would love to know what that means but i think i also have this great lived experience where like i have been in non-sexual situations enough in my life around new to situations i've helped my friend die like during cancer i've had to take him to the bathroom and clean his body and i know the differences between knowing when something feels sexual and it doesn't and bro like there's not even room for the sexuality but also like why would it even need to be there it's not the right <laughs> context I right just thought of, i just thought of one mm-hmm. uh, when my dog my my little boston terrier who has been dead for over a year now mm-hmm. um when he was in his the late in, in his late life, um, he, it, we, he would cuddle with me and he would be sleeping. But at night, his uh, rectum would prolapse and I would push it back in. And I would just, it just routine. I would just push it back in. And he would look at me at this face. He's like, you're, you're pushing my rectum in my fucking asshole. And because uh, he was dying? No, that he, he just, his just asshole didn't work anymore. Oh, baby. Um, yeah um it, it, he could shit in her. it was just it that just happened at night he was fine he, he died because he had brain tumors oh damn um a- anyway that was sexual yeah that's weird i think that's interesting i don't have that i, just, I don't think i was ge- i don't think I, neither of us was getting off on it but that was definitely there's a there's a there the, the reason it's weird to it's it, it's weird to do it's a weird, like a smiley, like, okay, I'm touching your, your rectum and pushing it back into you. And he felt weird about it. And that it, and it, we, neither of us was enjoying it, but that's, that, that, that was because it was sexual. Yeah. Sexual to me means something very specific. <laughs> like it doesn't fall into this category. Like I couldn't even right, imagine. But my like- definition, my definition of sexual encompasses things that are, 
uncomfortable and negative and, and we don't want them to be what we call sexual. But that I think that they're uncomfortable because they actually are sexual. Well, I just think like, I don't think they're always uncomfortable. Sure. Like maybe when that's what I'm trying is, to say is like, I'm not someone very is uncomfortable pushing, very often. When someone is pushing your rectum into your body, you know, I'm going to be real. I think women have a different experience in life because for us, we're like, so it's just a butt. Push it in, bro. Got to get shit done. Let's go. Yeah. But I think that women have to have that attitude because we force women to be in a certain role in the sexual dynamic between men and women. Um, I just think like, like humans are so much more nuanced than everything being sexual. I'm like, not I've, saying it's not nuanced. Yeah. But the base of a human isn't necessarily always their sexuality. You're, you're limiting humans down to this, like, thing that we are proving time and time again isn't universally experienced but you're saying even subconsciously it is and i'm saying yeah but what if it's not i'm even saying consciously it is experienced it's just that we don't want to define that experience as sexual because it makes us freak out like it's no, like i don't want to call that in a sex positive <laughs> space you would be able to d say out loud this doesn't feel sexual this does like i don't think it's always sexual i think to say it is always sexual is a sex repressed thought because it's I not allowing you to experience intimacy without sex. Intimacy can be non-sexual. You can sure. still feel close yeah, and vulnerable and it doesn't have to be sexual. But to add the sexuality element to it, I, I think, think is it, just so dishonest. No, I, I think it I think it is sexual, but that doesn't have to be um paid attention to. Like you can be spooning, you know, naked and have that not be as you're defining, have that not be sexual, but still be as I'm defining, still it is sexual. But I, when I define it as sexual, I think that gives me a room to be like, okay, this is there. We could make this more sexual, but we're choosing to focus on just being close in this moment. And that, because I want, I want to acknowledge it so that I can, so that I can, I, I can acknowledge the, ch the choice in what we're choosing to focus on so that it, it, it almost helps compartmentalize easier, you know? Yeah, as my Discord saying, whatever bubble this is, it's strange to me. It's like a very, it's a very like sex repressed thing to me. It's I not repressed. It is, it is, it is. Because you're discounting lived experiences by people that are not like you. And you're saying we're all the same. And I'm saying impossible, improbable. Like, no. No, I'm def just defining it different. I'm just defining yeah, sexuality like, different. That's the dilemma is like you're expressing something that like insinuates like a, a goal or an energy that doesn't make sense. Like when people don't think I can platonically shower with friends, like I don't even understand how you can't think that's possible. I think, I think, no, I think that by your definition, you are platonically showering with friends. And by my definition, you're not. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm fine with yeah. that. I just like, why do you want to limit yourself to only thinking you can have one experience? Because like, if no, it's is not on my one mind, experience. No, 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 it's not one it experience. I think if you're thinking about it, you're not having the same experience. I am saying, okay. Well, uh, I do think that acknowledging it does um, does change it a little bit. Um, but I think that that acknowledgement, um, what I'm defining as an acknowledgement, um, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that that is healthy because it means that there is, um, I think that it, it, it's like, um, there's a, there's a Zizek joke. That's kind of funny. He talks about, um, meeting up with a woman to have an intellectual intimate conversation. She brings a, a fleshlight or she brings a dildo and he brings a fleshlight and they both put them there on like, and they just put them into each other. And then that's okay. That's there. And now we can f focus on talking and being mm, close yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. So I, like I, that's what I think the everything is sex attitude like mm. should be is like you're trying to say everything's sex so that you can kind of separate it. <laughs> yeah, I just think like that's what's so beautiful about the world is like I would stay away from people who think like this because I would feel like very on edge the whole time because I'm like, we are not communicating clearly. Now you are a threat, but not really. Okay, so, okay, so it's a little bit can of a I give a, yeah. A, like, so we are naked together, okay? okay. Is this okay of a hypothetical? Sure. Okay, and so you, we're, we're taking a shower and you don't want it to be sexual. And I'm like, okay. it's sexual. <laughs> and, uh, well, then so, I wouldn't so, with you, right? Because you wouldn't exactly, be able exactly. to have the shower with me in a way that's neutral. And it would make me uncomfortable that you're saying it's not too, because yeah. I, for me to feel like it's not, I would want you, you to admit that it is. Right. So I'm saying both are valid. 
but that's why we have to know who we're with. Like, that's why I read Max so wrong, because I thought he was neutral about sexuality or about sex, or I thought he could be non-sexual in his slapping. Like, when I read the room wrong, when I say, like, slapping isn't kinky, slapping can be kinky, but slapping can also be about, okay. like, power or a challenge. It could be, like, when I slap my brothers, are we being kinky? Like, everyone's so Freud over here. Well, Everybody well, here's relax, the thing. you know? Well, well, here, here's the thing. Not only does, does I think what I said apply, probably, I don't know, maybe he'd disagree, but I think yeah. what I said applies to him. But on top of that, this is just a vibes thing. I, I, I don't, maybe I shouldn't speak for him, but... Sure. I just don't I think that he would make it more sexual because he doesn't want to just you know he he doesn't want to also yeah. just put it aside <laughs> he'd be like I'm only wrong. slapping I you I <laughs> heavily flirted with Max because like I flirt with everyone in a gay way and then I realized I'm coming into a very heterosexual space like even though people in the space call themselves bisexual this is the straightest space I have ever been in which means like flirting is seen as like the end of the end all be all versus in my spaces like if you're not flirting like are you mad at me like what's happening? Because like flirting is supposed to be fun and neutral and like exciting, but also like it's about banter. It's not supposed to be real either. Like it doesn't necessarily mean anything. So I realized like for me, I've been in such neutralized spaces, sex positive spaces that like sex and talking about sex is neutral. It's like talking about butter or like being flirty. It doesn't mean anything. It's just about banter or like, you know, until you negotiate, everything is just for fun. So even like slapping someone, that's like for fun. What do you mean? That is, it's horseplay or horsing around or you're being silly. Like nothing is anything. But I think in certain spaces or certain bubbles around the world, it like it has to mean something and it's which is valid and like it's cultural and I'm here for it. But I think that's why you have to know the differences. So yeah, like I would not feel comfortable showering with you because it means we're coming from this in a different perspective, like which is valid. Like it's fine. I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm saying I'd we feel might comfortable. end up. I just you know like. Well, we might miscommunicate, which means feeling. something bad might happen, right? Like if we miscommunicate, something might accidentally happen that doesn't need to happen, right? Yeah. So we might put ourselves in a bad situation versus saying like, oh, Smith, like, are you comfortable with this? And if you're like, actually, I can't help but like see this as sexual, but, like no problem. Uh, like not going to be a thing. Like when I invite all the queer girls together to go to a bathhouse, which as I, you know, I did one time for a party – we're not all coming there to be sexual. We're coming there to be in a bathhouse and chill and like zen out and meditate. So I can understand how like that might be seem, seem strange to people, but like you can imagine that's just, it's so neutral. We're reading, we're bringing our books and we're, you know, our essential oils and we're not thinking, but like mm, you're insinuating mm, that it's going to be sexual. Turning pages. Mm, <laughs> you know you're, what you're I mean? just open up that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So again, it's like, for me, I have such a different lived experience. I've 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 had to pop these bubbles myself, right? Like as a virginal person going to my first BDSM party in a nudist situation where I was the only clothed person, I had to like pop these bubbles and realize like, oh, the nudity is neutral. Not to all the people there. Not to all the people there. Some people are like you, but for a lot of I the just, people there, it's I just you know, think that 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 calling it neutral is like a social like we're we're going to say that this isn't sexual because and I think that that that, that that has a utility and i think that you people like buy into it it's like psychologically i think but some I, people I, do like some people have to tell themselves like don't get a hard on right now don't get wet but i just like sit there and i don't even think about it i'm like who cares bro i'm not into you i'm not thinking about you sexually you're not even in the so sexual context for me like unless i think telling yourself not to get a hard on is probably the worst way to not get a hard on probably well, yeah, I would just i'm just saying some people will have that struggle that is that's why in sex positive communities we don't shame people for getting hard ons we're just like excuse yourself to the bathroom we get it it's a body you're gonna do stuff no problem like we're not shaming you we're like it's your body it's fine but like, you know, be appropriate with it until you learn to really neutralize yourself or you're somebody like me who like won't even process you as a sexual option unless I'm literally one attracted to you or two, the context makes sense. Like I'm very specific. Or what about if you're demi or what if you're al or like a asexual or what if you're like, I just think some so many people are having different experiences. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't think the sexual element could possibly be there all the time when it like, I don't have that experience. I have no way. I know myself so well, Smith. I spent all my life being introspective and you think I wouldn't know and wouldn't admit to you if I was finding every situation sexual. Like, oh, why I think part I of it, it, part of it's a definitional thing too. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Like somebody like, okay, somebody might say it's like the intention versus the like thoughtful. Like for me, I just like ask myself, like, am I even having this thought? Like, and I do, by the way. Like, when I, couple hold on. Well, sexual in this, the way that I'm defining it is kind of like kinetic energy. A ball held very high above your head has very uh, like high kinetic energy. You can let go of the ball and it 
falls to the ground, the higher you hold the ball, the more stored kinetic energy. Um, and I think that's the same way with sexuality, but doesn't mean the ball is dropping. I think your definition of sexuality is the ball is dropping, but my definition of sexuality is the ball is high. It, the ball has that potentiality. Yeah, I just think like it sets into motion again. Like, are you saying, oh, I just don't think this could be, I think it's obviously like incest happens, right? So I'm not saying like, oh my God, are you saying all family members are into each other? Obviously sometimes family members can be like wanting to be with each other. We read those stories on Reddit all the time, right? I don't think that's weird um, in terms of like a human phenomenon. But I think to say that all family members are always thinking that or it's always in the room is kind of like- I'm a, just saying the potentiality is there. Well, the potentiality is there for people it's there for. Sure, but it can't be there I, for all I, we people. We don't. I don't agree. I, I just yeah. don't agree. Yeah, I just don't think I, well, I don't, people are having I don't the same think, lived experience. I don't think asexual is a thing either. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's fair. Oh, okay. I that's think fair. it comes from like trauma and stuff. Oh, that's like, so interesting. That's you think biological creatures as like organisms that have evolved over millions and millions of years didn't have some anomalies in the evolution. Um, I think that's possible, but I just think that. I've seen uh, the people that I've seen that are asexual, I think are. Um, they, I think that's true. I, I, I have don't. Been yeah. They but, don't want to be sexual in the way that the society wants them to be sexual. And so it it's traumatic and they don't want to be part of it. And it's true. I've seen those people too. That's the problem. Same with non-binary. It's like, I've seen those people that are like non-binary in a way that pisses me off. And then I've met people that I'm like, Oh, you're authentically having like a real experience. And those are the people that I'm focused on. Cause I'm like, Oh, this is like a real experience. Cool. Like someone gets to live this reality because I like, not everyone has access to it. Same with asexual. Like when I meet a real person experiencing like an asexual relationship, that I'm like oh this is very unique and cool and awesome but also not because no one's special but also cool like you're the anomaly in the evolutionary process that's why I'm open to people changing labels every two seconds I don't give a fuck change it as many times as you need until you find the right answer that's why I'm like don't get a diagnosis to have a label get a diagnosis to know yourself more but it's fine if you use them temporarily it's fine if you identify as asexual because you have trauma but also I think there really is an asexual anomaly that happens in the in the evolutionary process yeah, I'm very um yeah, I'm very excited by that reality that like oh I think it could be like I think you could have like a hormone thing. Uh, like you could have no hormones or something well, like that or uh maybe, but like also kind of same thing, like in a way, like you're living I remember when my dad I came out, my dad's like, Can you please go check if you have too much testosterone and that's why you're queer? And I was like, Okay. And I went and the doctor was like, I can't test if you're gay. I was like, just do the test so my dad can chill. Obviously, I came back perfectly normal. But my dad was like, this isn't it. What happened? Was it the liberal media? And I was like sitting there like, oh, my God. Like people don't want to believe people's experiences because it so contradicts their own bubble. But Your I'm dad saying, made you gay. Yeah, I'm saying pop the bubbles and realize not everyone's the same, bros. People are having real experiences outside. of It was him. It was him. He asked me that. You know what he asked me? He goes, did you end up gay because I raised you as a boy? And I was like, okay, first of all, news to me. I thought you were raising me as a person. But like, I get what he's saying. He's worried that he socialized me into being queer, which is like a very interesting possibility. Uh, but no, if he could have socialized me into being queer, he should have socialized me into being a better Catholic, which also didn't work. Well, he accidentally socialized you into being like, so I, um, it sounds like from what you've told me, is this okay for me to do? Yeah. Like psychoanalyze? Okay, so so... It's, it sounds like in some ways you had a healthy childhood and it sounds like he was there. He, he, he was very, he had good boundaries and he, um, from what you've said, he had, um, he ha let you be a kid kind of mm -hmm. in a way. Um, and, uh, what I'm imagining is, so him letting you do that, but also having these concerns about you being queer and wondering why that is and you being doing your job being a teenager like being rebellious and him being very permissive of that rebelliousness and you're very you know that you know oh, like you, you are uh, genuinely doing right. your job and the way he was was the you you did the appropriate response to exactly what he did i just think some people are gay bro <laughs> I, I think everybody's gay yeah, I think everyone's probably bisexual or pansexual, but like gay, gay, and straight, straight probably exist. Mm. And I don't think having gay sex makes you gay. I think that's so reductive. No, like so in the same way, I think I think that yeah, I think everybody's everybody's gay. Everybody's bi, and um, 
I think that if you don't think that you're bi, it's just like saying you don't think that, um, like showering is with someone is somewhat sexual. It's the same. I just think uh, people are unique and I believe in their, I think they're all one of a kind, but I don't think they're special. So I don't think anyone's having like an original thought or original experience, but I do think we're talking about experiences in ways we've never had before, which allows people to now all come out, but they've always existed. Like trans people have always existed. And now we're just talking to them, talking about them in a different context. And like some people identify as trans who aren't and some people identify as cis who aren't. Why did this conversation fail for Max? Hmm? Why did Max try to have this conversation with you and it broke down into... Because he accused me of being a cult leader. So bad faith. Everyone in this space is so fucking bad faith well, I, and their own ass. Okay, well, I have, I, have, I have said that you are a culty a little bit. Being but culty like, is not the same as being a cult leader. And also... Yeah, yeah. Only also, cult, yeah but you're on my Discord, aren't you now? You should go look at it. Yeah. Does it feel culty to you? I haven't looked at it, but... See? That's, nobody I ever should, looks I should, into me. They I always should. just guess. <laughs> you, yeah, um... I don't. I, I, I'm theorizing that he did to you, like he he went really hard into trying to force conflict that you would have had, like, regardless, mm. and you would have probably went there. Mm. Yeah, I think Max was uh, really bad at communicating and didn't put down boundaries, and also. I'm pretty neurodivergent. So even the way we're miscommunicating could be a lot of that or like could be cultural or um, words mean words mean, like mean totally different things to me than other people. And I know other people think everyone is the same, but we really aren't all raised the same. And I think this space and like forgets that so hard. Like I, I, I think I think he, this is what I think. I think that he thought you would be like talking to everyone else he had already talked to so far in his career and then like tr like thought he had to pry conflict out of you cuz it's something he needs so desperately and so i think like you were trying to give it to him and he was like like trying to like like grabbing it with pliers out of your fucking mouth you know what i mean while you're trying to give it to him and then it's like what the fuck is going on here dude you know what i mean yeah i d i don't know i just know that the way that i look i'm i think people are good and i'm used to people being very kind and thoughtful so when I come to a space where like people aren't being that, I'm like very confused. But also I'm used to being very critical as well. I grew up Middle Eastern. We're very loving, critical people. We're incredibly loving. We will we will give a homeless man the shirt off our backs. We will buy them dinner and we will still go home and be like, I can't believe they're homeless. You know, because like that's how we are. We love you, but also why are you fat? We love you, but also why don't you have a job? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, we're very critical people, but we really do. We'll do anything because at the end of the day, we know it's the best thing to do is to be thoughtful. But at the same time, we're critical. So it's a hard it's a hard thing to swallow. And I think Max and other people hear me being critical and they don't understand that, like, with love, it's not personal. No, but he wants you to be critical, though. That's the thing. Well, no, he doesn't. He wants me to combat, like, fight with him for funsies. And I don't, it's not fun. Debating's not fun to me. What's the fun in it? Conflict I don't think or, it was debating. Well, I, like, then he he's, shouldn't have you're, opened you're, up by calling me a cult leader. I think he fucked, I think he fucked up. Well, he no, no, that's up. the thing. Well, no, no, I think he, I, I don't think, I don't think he could have done anything other than that. But I don't think that that conversation could have gone, like, I think also, he I don't know maybe maybe it couldn't have gone in any other way why do you and I get along <laughs> um because I'm not getting emotional because I remember him like getting uh trying to bring up that you were flirting with him <laughs> right and uh and then you had like an argument about that and uh So, so what I'm wondering here, since Max is my role model, right? So what I'm wondering about this, I'm like, this, this is very honest. Um, so is the difference because, so I, I need to know, is the difference be a good thing or a bad thing? And first I'm trying to go for, to people please you. I'm first going to, is it a bad thing? Um, is what a bad thing? The uh, the di actually no the the diff good thing I'm I'm uh the bad thing about him, the 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 thing about him that made him uh engage with you in that way, is a is something wrong with him or something, uh and to people please you that's what I'm first theorizing about, um, but I should theorize about like the, so. 
am because he was very emotional and yet he was bringing a lot of emotionally chargedness into it am i am able to engage with you intellectually but am i suppressing my my own emotions while i'm talking to you Mm. i don't know Mm. um i don't i don't know uh i'm not It's something I want to figure out, but also me saying that it's, it's, how do you feel about me saying that, that I'm emulating Max? Makes sense. He's your mentor or someone you look up to. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't see you as Max. First, I see you as a full fledged consciousness all on your own. You are not Max. Yeah, I know. I get it. You said that everybody's. <laughs> okay. But like, I just want to make sure that's clear because I see Max as his own entity, but it doesn't bother me that you're learning from him. I'm curious what you do with it. Yeah. Um, I'm here to see your journey, my bro. I want to see how it ends or it continues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I'm a part of it. I think I'm a part of it, though. I'm not a part I of it. I think you're like, a part of it. I, I'm a part of it, but in the background, I'm not like, oh, Smith learned from me, and I'll I'll be more of a main character in your life. I feel like I'm a pretty well. I'm learn. I definitely learn. I learn things from you, but you. I don't think you have the same mental illnesses or mm-hmm. you know that kind of thing as me. Right. So the intimacy, the the amount I can see you is less than needed to form a closer bond. But the bond we have, I think, is good enough that I'm like, oh, I really enjoy Smith. I like talking to him. I think he's interesting. I want to hear what he thinks. But I also feel like we have good and co- like I love this conversation. I think it's so nice. Like this is what I want when I come into this space. I want to have these conversations with people. I don't want to have combative, bad faith, twisting the narratives. Like what are we? T- I'm. So- I can't even keep up with the conversation. I'm getting over. I don't feel overstimulated with you. I feel energetic and happy and also like comforted in like a sense that it's comfortable. Like I'm like, oh, I'm not on edge at all. I'm just so relaxed. You know, when I went in with my talk with Max, I was very excited, like uh, excited. And then I was like on guard and then I was shocked. And then I was like, (gasps) and I was like, oh my. And internally I was like, what the fuck is happening? And I was like, I'm so confused. I was like, oh, he's playing a game. Okay. What game is he playing? And then I was trying to figure out what game he was playing. And then it got confusing. I, I really think that he was treating you the same as he had been. Because everybody else he was talking to, like most streamers are like this. Mm. Where, where where they make you, if you are a people pleaser, you're going to end up people pleasing them because they really want that. And, and they're going to really make it, they're going to really, um, what is the, they're going to broadcast like, like all of that to you, exactly what they need. And, and it's going to be obvious in its that skill set or mindset. Um, and so I think that he didn't start out st- like streaming like that, but he learned to start like being really antagonistic to that and uh, like fight against that. And then he went in, I, I think that he went in with you doing that. Mm. I, I do I do have to pee um, Me in, too. A non, in a Wait, non-sexual way. Do you want to, should we pee together in a non-sexual way and then oh come back? Oh my God. You trust me to not, you wouldn't trust me to shower, <laughs> but you would trust me to pee. Oh, peeing is very non-sexual. Well, well, okay, no, hold on. Okay, we, we can talk about peeing after. Okay, okay but perfect. Okay, you want to, so, should we do that? Should we be right back? Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's be right back. Right. So yeah, peeing is very, very, um, very sexual. I tried not to think about you, which made me think about you. So it's <laughs> confusing. <laughs> um, I uh, I think that we, uh, girls should learn to pee standing up. Oh my god, it's so difficult. I've done so much camping on my own. I grew up camping. I was such a tomboy growing up my whole life. Dirt bikes, skateboards, camping, and uh, I tried many times to pee, and uh, every time I make a mess. I am not good at it. Fair. It's yeah. definitely harder. It's definitely harder. It's just I I I think that we, uh, in potty training like our kids and stuff. Mm-hmm. There's this discrepancy between how we train, we like teach our like boys and how we teach our girls. Mm-hmm. And I think boys start off with a solid foot 
into their relationship with their body and their their own sex organs being something they have like control over mm. and being something like you know and it's like a fun thing like you you can aim it you can saw the log you know you can write your name in the snow and i think that girls is just something kind of hide and i think that sets the tone for a lot in society my dad's a that... and raised all my brothers to sit to pee wow mm-hmm Did you have any more questions about her uh, <laughs> observations? Um, I think realistically, the thing that I took about from it the most was just the thing that I'm figuring out with my work is like, why do so many men complain that nobody cares about their feelings, but yet okay. won't acknowledge? That, I have a like, new framework. Yeah, tell me. Men, uh, so so the red pill idiots and stuff, they all say that men have turned into women. That's not true. Men have just turned into babies and they're part of it. Um, and I think that um, it's like hypergamy actually is not really so real as people think it is. Uh, there's actually a trend of women settling more, not, not less. Um, and I think that women are just not... Um, not impressed with men right now men Maybe. are i think um I, I i briefly pointed this out to max the other day and he he brought up trump i think that might be like an archetype of this like baby man that sort of like men are just uh <clears throat> women are becoming more like men and men are just becoming like worse men mm. Mm. i could see that actually yeah I think there's a huge part of that at play in parts of society for sure. Yeah, definitely. Also, I think like hypergamy is a very interesting social construct that does occur in certain places. But I think like the word settling is so different in my vocabulary. It means you're settling on values. And like I was never taught that a man's w income was a part of his value. A man's willingness to work hard was. And those are two very different things. But in hypergamy conversations – they usually equate a man's worth to his income and women date up, meaning income and status. But I think you should date values. You should always date somebody who's like more disciplined, but also not really like equal discipline's fine, but never date anyone less disciplined than you. Like I don't, that's, mm -mm, you know, but like again, values, like I wouldn't date someone with less values than me. I would date someone with the same values or even more disciplined than me. But like what is income, right? What is money? It's a construct. I want someone who works hard and is willing to work hard and do what it takes, not somebody who makes a lot of money. Like, what good is your money, right, if you're an asshole and you beat me? What good is your money if you cheat on me? What good is your money if you're going to hit our kids? I just want someone to put up with me. Hmm. Is that real or is that a joke? Uh, it's kind of real. Hmm. What do you, can I explore that with you or no? Me being the type of streamer that I am um, is going to, like the vulnerability is in, in uh, sort of, emotional exhibitionism maybe. Um, that is something that someone needs to tolerate um, I, they need to tolerate me, um, my emotions and stuff like that, um, and not give up and be able to figure things out. Um, so like when I say that, I, I just, it's just that I feel like, I feel like good relationships aren't found, they're built. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't find somebody that is like, you know, like there's certain qualities that, that are important to help establish that. But also there's a different aspect that I find like is really important and sort of rare and rarer. And that is the commitment to building the thing mm. and uh, not giving up. And so I think that that is a really important thing. Like, e e e So if I can't find everything else, if that thing exists, then that's a lot better than the opposite. 
Yeah, it's interesting. I watched the David Beckham docuseries on Netflix recently, and I think what was clear to me is as David transferred from team to team, it could start off strong as long as everyone was individually a strong player because you never do anything alone. And when he got into a team that was weak as individuals, it like didn't matter how good he was. And then when he got into teams where everyone did their own work, it would became like an amazing team right away. And I think that's how I view like the differences. Like I felt like I was always playing on teams where I was doing the best and that's not good. Like I shouldn't be the best person here. I was a mess. But in my now relationship, I feel like we both are the David Beckham of our lives. And so by the time we got together, it was like, oh, the team was going to do fine because like we're both doing the work. You know, so the relationship had to be built with each other. I couldn't have built it without him and vice versa. But the cool, the cool thing about the difference is like, I'm not the star player and I hated being the star player. I thought that that was always the the sign to me that something was wrong was that I couldn't rely on my partner the way I relied on myself. And I need a partner I can rely on the same way I can rely on myself. They're different in texture, like strawberry cake is different from coconut, but like still good cake you know and that's what I'm looking for so I, I see it more like a team building thing I couldn't do it without him but I also know I needed somebody who was already doing the, their own putting in the 100% we both put in 100% so going back to what you said earlier like that's hard for me to identify in this stage in my life now that you have to be there obviously we're all at different stages of like you're like put- married right so mm-hmm. yeah so like I'm not so um, oh, I think do you believe that you, in, you, I wasn't sure. Like, do you believe in marriage? No, 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 no I, I think that you probably have insight that I don't have. Oh, I actually don't I, know your I, relationship structure either. I don't know if this is like your forever partner or just like the person you're dating and to see if it's if your forever partner. It's to see. Okay. Okay. So, you, okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And that makes sense too. Obviously I wouldn't have married him. I've never married anybody. Like I wouldn't have done that unless I was sure that we were going to grow old together in a way that made sense for our lives. Um, but, you, you know, you learn to do that by dating. I've dated enough people to know. So I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, to I be feel... put up with is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I feel spoonage. I feel, feel spoon running low. Fair. But for me, for me, that is a really weird thing because the feeling of spoons running low is synonymous with me people-pleasing. And I think that that con- mini conversation we just had was me people pleasing you. Mm. That's fair. That could be. Does that fe- did that conversation feel less um, invigorating or whatever than um, previous conversation in any to any extent? I think the reason I asked your permission to go down it was I wasn't sure how interesting it was to you. Oh. Like you might not get like it might be boring. So this what we're doing now. I can like and that like I I. I still feel a little bit tired but like then like i get energized but like the less the the more yeah it's people pleasing that it makes me feel exhausted and tired panels do that to me so much because er- everybody is the way like everybody's trying to force you to be small and yeah i've yeah. if you have a big audience it doesn't happen to you as much but uh if you had said no to me, like if I said, hey, can we expand on that? And you'd been like, no, nope, I'm not interested. I'd be like, okay. And then I would have gone to something else. But you didn't. So but that you've was you- propped me up. You've propped me up as this 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 excellent conversational partner. And and uh, and so then uh, like I have to meet these like these high, these lofty exercise. I, I like <laughs> I need to- <laughs> You say yeah. no will signal to me that like that's how worthy you are of a conversationalist. You won't waste my time. Well, I'm I'm telling you now. Um, I'm learning to not waste people's time. I appreciate that. I think that's a good skill to learn. I also think it's hard for people to process because, as in you- my own time, I don't care about your time. I care about my time. It just hurts me. It's like torture. It's pain. Yeah. Like, and I'll watch it after, and then I will like hate that person. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Why? It, like, it was, it was so like, why did you start doing that? Yeah, and. Yeah. I don't agree with you that fear is the root of all evil. Mm, fair. But I do agree that it, in this context, it's the root of a lot of this shit. But there's times when fear is good. 
I mean, fear within reason makes sense. I think when I say that, I'm being a little like, I'm trying to be, you know, I'm trying to like make okay. people go, oh, what? What does she mean? Like, obviously, with a lot of what I'm saying, like, I'll tell a joke. My audience is like, that's very serious. I'm like, no, that's the joke. And like, okay. So okay, obviously, okay, when okay. I say fear is the root of all evil, I don't mean like fear is a Because it'll keep you alive, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm saying like fear. Yeah. The extreme of fear is also the neglect of introspection, which is why people like cognitive dissonance, which is why people don't allow themselves to like... Yeah, the fear is what makes me people please, yeah. and um, that's what creates a lot of cognitive dissonance. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's actually why I ended up being the person that I am. Where I'm like, no, and then people are like, what do you mean, no? And I'm like, no. And I'm like, I know I'm being rude right now, but I know if I give into this, then I'm giving into my fear, and if I give into my fear, I'll become a person I hate to make you feel comfortable. So I'm gonna make you be uncomfortable because you're asking me to be uncomfortable, and I'm gonna pick me. And like, it sounds really cruel because like you are taught, especially as a girl in my bubble to like, please. And then you hear a lot of feedback since I was a little girl, like since I was a little girl, like Brittany, you can't just do that. And I'm like, but yet I did and nobody killed me. So I think it's okay. Like, I think I'm testing the boundaries when adults tell me like, you can't just do that. And I'm like, what's going to happen? And they're like, we won't want to hang out with you. And I was like, I can live with that. And everyone's like, that's, that's, you shouldn't want to hang out with me. You know, I, you don't like me. You know? Exactly. That's what like, and I'm trying to say like, there's a difference between like, somebody who's close to me coming to me and saying like, hey, I don't think I like the way you said that. Look, look, if my mom and dad watch my work, which they don't, we have an understanding, they would say, your work really hurts me. I want you to not do it. And I would say, I love that you're coming to me and telling me that I decline your request. And they'd say, what do you mean? And I'd say, well, I'm not Catholic and you're upset that I'm like talking about Catholicism, but I'm not going to do it. And I have people tell me that all the time. Like I have my friends who come to me and they're like, I don't like the way you talk about white men. I don't like the way you talk about this. I don't like the way. Get your own YouTube channel. I love you. Get your own channel. I think people forget like, um, it's that, not about That was me. That was me. That 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 person that got the own YouTube because I was just um, repeatedly posting to in mr girl's inbox or whatever like all this like criticism everything that he said that was wrong constantly and i just start making my own youtube channel see and like you're an interesting content creator you have your own thing i don't even associate you with him as like a lot of people will say things like oh smith like is mr girl jr and like does he even have his own identity yes you guys are just not seeing it because you're brain dead but like also it's that's not fair. it's almost weaponized it's, it it's is. not it, yeah it's <laughs> not like a but those people the only thing is I don't want those people to define me to other people that aren't already yeah. saying that. But like it's going to be what it is, right? Like people like, I mean, when I came into this space, I already had my own career, my own income, my own fan base and everything. Great fan base, the best fan base. And um, when I came into this space and I le like somewhat left it, people would say things like, oh, her career is over. And I'm like, what? What is it? <laughs> you guys are so narcissistic that you think like you are the end all be all of people's careers. Like I've never been in a space that has ever said that to me where like oh, her career's over if she's not hanging out with us. And I'm like, what? Like, that's amazing yeah. to me. Like I've never, oh, yeah, you, you did freeze. Yeah, you did freeze. Yeah, so that's it. the, yeah, this is the, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, I just need to have fun with it, I think, mm. um, and sort of use Max um, as a like tool to talk about other things. And then, because that, that is, ironically, that has made people see me as separate more than anything else. I believe that. <clears throat> I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, th I think the good best commentary channels or the best channels or the best content creators, in my opinion, are people who use other people to make a greater point because they're lived examples. Like I know it's like offensive to some people, but like, bro, if you put your life online for content, it's a great example. But also it also gives people opportunity to explain themselves further. Like if somebody makes a video misrepresenting you, you can like make another video and then that like expands the ideas. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity here to really have fun before we die. Yeah. Mm hmm. Are you going to take your videos off the internet before you die? No. Hmm. Are you? Uh, I don't know yet. I, I am not, I'm not concerned about being remembered forever or anything. I just don't. I uh, like, it's not like my goal. Some people that 
you know, define themselves as an artist, like their whole thing is really just be afraid to die and they don't want to, they don't want to be forgotten. Right. But that's not what it is for me. It's, it's, I just want to do it. And it's about being connected, uh, connecting with other people, people while I'm alive. Mm. Yeah. Um, I might like, I have like a thousand videos that are privated. Maybe I would like unleash them all into the world. Like they're all so interesting and they show such a great, there's such a good time capsule for like the time I was there and like what my generation was talking about or like what my bubble was talking about. Maybe I'd unleash them onto the public to show like a journey, you know, like a documentary or something. I don't know. I'm yeah, gonna, I don't. Gonna, that's, mm -hmm. that's how I am now. I like have like my old, my, my, my early streams. I, I feel like I was, uh, I mean, I need to love that version of me, but. I feel like I was just like people pleasing a lot and mm. but I'm not taking them down. Yeah. See, I private every new era of Britney. I private and I restart because um, I don't like going back and like having a miscommunication of like what my values are now because just because I changed so drastically. That is something I want to have a conversation about, though, because like in that that because when people take something you said um, like this used to be a big fear of mine because I see people do it in this sphere a lot where they'll take something you said in the past and see, but like you're a hypocrite or whatever. And it's like, yeah. no, I actually it changed. Right. And that I think is a, like an interesting conversation to have a lot yeah. of the, I think a lot of these, the, the, like the, these attitudes are ironically content gold for talking about like uh, like they're like branching off points to talk about like other things so i'm honestly i i, I kind of am excited for that yeah i can see that i am losing spoons so yeah yeah i'm a little tired honestly it's like 12 30 a.m i'm getting a little tired plus you work today so thank you for making time to talk to me yeah i appreciate it you're welcome i really do i have to figure out if i have to work tomorrow but mm. well fingers crossed please reach out if you ever want to talk again and i'm looking forward to seeing uh where this moment takes you all right okay I, nice right, bye bye night my mind cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed so why's my life a mess please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking yeah I'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool